All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Kim, and you are listening to another episode of Talking Greasy. I am so excited about this one because this one is going to be kind of a recap of hip hop thus far, all the way up until where we are today. When y'all hear it, it'll be in September, but it is August something, 28th, 29th, some shit. Um, we have lots of people in the studio right now. I want everybody to kind of let let everyone know who you are, so I'm going to start with you. <clears throat> uh, it's Megazaw, uh, one third of the uh, Illuminating Group, uh, <laughs> Triple Digital, <laughs> uh, representing Black Swan, representing these Dallas projects, Muhammad Moss 48, all that, you know what I'm saying? Long Star Music, music producer, Grove Side representative, that's it. <laughs> Is this a common thing? Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to hold in and laugh. Like, Megazar is like, I bet Megazar have the hardest time making Twitter bios. Like, this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm like, yo, this he got, like, it's dope as shit, though. He got the best adjectives. He remind me of, like, Ross. Like, Ross intros. That's what Megazar is going remind say, me I of. I sell illuminating fruit juice. <laughs> <laughs> and who are y'all? Um, I'm Hollywood Cast, the little nigga with the big mouth, and uh, I'm one half of Don't Take It Personal. And uh, you can follow me on the gram if you're interested in food and fly shit on Smashing in a Bunk Bed. It's a great name. That's like you, you, you two got the best social media names. I'm gonna be real with you, but it's uh, just just so y'all know, this is your boy Jay Will from the Don't Take It Personal <laughs> podcast, um, actor, producer, filmmaker, also here in Dallas, Texas. Talk your shit. Oh man, I can keep going, but I'm gonna stop myself. This is All your right. show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before we get started, um, I want to say prayers and blessings to everybody who was affected by yes, Hurricane indeed. Harvey. For sure. Um, you guys, when you're listening to this, if you want to do anything <clears throat> to help, um, I actually just found out today that if you are, um, if you feel compelled to do this, um, Airbnb is adding a feature where you can open up your home to somebody who needs shelter uh, and it is free for them, free for you. Um, And I'm not exactly sure how long they're going to be doing this, but they are definitely doing that starting right now. So if you, you, if you feel, you know, if the spirit moves you to do that um, and of course contact uh, greater Houston um, community fund uh, to donate money. If you want to do that instead. Um, Yeah. So, let's get this shit started. Yeah. Um, there have been a lot of albums that came out. I want to start off by kind of running down what has come out since January. So, right. January was Migos Culture. Uh, February. Was it that long ago, right? Yes. Yeah. Damn, because they still, they still relevant out here. Like, I know. You still, I know. You're still know. hearing records from it like yeah, every day, yeah. so it just throws me off. Yeah, January, Migos Culture. February, uh, Future, Future Hendrix. Uh, March was Rick Ross, Rather You Than Me. And Drake, More Life. Um, in April, it was Kendrick Dam, And then Young M.A.'s Her Story, which... <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I, like, I don't want to laugh. I turn. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, May was Gucci, Drop Top Wop, um, Wool Yachty's Teenage Emotions. Uh, <laughs> Snoop Dogg, Never Left. Uh, <laughs> God damn. God damn. Kimmy got depressed. It's, like, right it's a depressing ass <laughs> year. Right? So we could kill ourselves? What the fuck is going on? We are like, uh, we are like on the 13th floor. We might have to jump out the window. <laughs> I wanted some company. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, June 2 Chains, Pretty Girls Love Trap Music. Okay, there we go. Uh, DJ go. Khaled is grateful. Yeah. And Jay Z. <laughs> and Jay Z is 444. Um, and then July was um, 21 Savage, Issa, Tyler the Creator, Flower Boy, Meek Mill, Wins and Losses, <laughs> Irv Gotti <laughs> presents Tales the Playlist. Wait, huh? What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he dropped, you know that TV show he has on BET oh, Tales, the soundtrack right? Track? Yeah, it's the soundtracks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, nigga, Irv Gotti presents. Yeah. It's, going, yeah. it's going sour real fast. You sure to say 2002. You like, know what? <laughs> I haven't seen that show. I didn't really feel feel the spirit move me to do that. I didn't feel uh, compelled either. Irv got no. it. No. Um, oh, come on now. And then it's Irv got it. Man, we, in 2017. Nobody wants that. Um, for this month, well, August, um, Moneybag Yo, Federal, Three, 
uh, Kodak Black, Project Baby 2. Jesus. ASAP Ferg, Still Striving, Dave East, Paranoia. Okay, there we go. Lil Uzi, mm. Love is Rage 2, mm. uh, Action Bronson, <clears throat> Blue Chip hey. 7000, and XXX Tentacion, or however the fuck you pronounce that, Extension. 17. Yeah, ex- extensions. The stolen. Clip in extensions. <laughs> 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 oh, so. All right, so out of all, everything that came out since January, was there anything that you liked, disliked? Let's give me, give me 444, uh, give me Damn. Give me pretty girls like trap music, and mm-hmm. give me rather you than me, and then that's it. That's it. That's it. Like that's this year, like this year has been. Um, give me culture too. Migos actually did a good job of culture. Mm-hmm. I, 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 didn't Drake Cole trash yeah, shit come out? Early? No, it came out. Oh, came out last December year. of last year. Last you gonna year. trash Cole on camera? I hope you're ready, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Woo, yes, niggas is going. I, I did just go to his last show. Wasn't that bad, bro? He put on a good show. I, mean, I think he's a good performer. No, he. Could, we, I heard that. We not. I'm not. Cole is Cole got it. That 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 shit just wasn't that. that wasn't for one, it. he pulled the wool over my eyes because I thought false prophets. I thought that was gonna be, was the gonna be on the album. That shit yeah. was actually amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it was. but but see, but see, he does that a lot though. Because yeah. if you remember the Truly Yours series he did before Born Center, but at least he gave us that damn disc. Yeah, mm-hmm. he didn't even do that. Like he <laughs> can play false prophets yeah. and not that shit. So. <laughs> uh, mine's was probably mine's was honestly four forty four. I'm one of the few niggas more tunes for your head top. I like more life. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, uh, I like more life too. I liked raw shit. Uh, I would say honestly. Yeah, four forty four raw shit. Um, I did like culture too. Um, that that I ain't gonna lie. The ones that have recently came out, I recently listened to. Lose verse shit was trash. I mean, he's were you trash. expecting oh, anything else? But you expect like no lie. He got too much sauce. He has uh, you were right. He has records that he's trash. Yes, but even a trash nigga can make a record. But they were his. They were features. I mean, that point. Is, great point, Kim. Very good point. Why he didn't bring I mean, none he, of them hoes he, on? Bring them on the album. Like, get some. The joint was for real. It was, it was dope. After they had fucked that shit. But it's for real. <laughs> yeah, he got a joint for real on real, there? I don't really yeah. want to hear for real rap. Nah. Man, I, oh, come on. Now you tell. Wait, time out. You tell yep. me for real ain't never went hard. Say. As a rapper? I just told As a rapper, you the, yes. The sun Hell even shines nah. on a dog's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I told you every nigga. That nigga said in the hood. <laughs> They wake up to the hammer noise. <laughs> Sound like the work of my jerks, the swagger boys. Like, nah. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I loved in my mind for the production. Yeah. <laughs> like, for, give me any RD nerd, man. I mean, yes. uh, for real. I, I don't give a fuck about I'm just, I'm just thinking in comparative to some of the shit we're subject to today, I will uh-uh. take for real rapping all day. M- give me, say, give me Lil, Lil Uzi Vert over for real. Nah, I, I can't go that no, far. That, yeah, no. nigga, I can't rapping? go that far, yes. Oh, no, nigga rapping. Nigga, there's not a singular. What rap song has Pharrell dropped that was even jammable in a club? Even rap? in a club setting. You can't just, just one of his songs? Him rapping. Him you know? rapping. Drop it like it's hot. Bruh. Him he rapping. That he delivered that to Snoop, hit, bro. Bruh. Drop it like he's it's hot. not sitting there like, oh, man, my nigga Pharrell went hard. I hear, I hear, I hear can I have it like that played rapping. in plenty of clubs? Yeah, that was my, and that we ju- we just the dusted. Of your old project, then we nigga, just dusted. I definitely didn't mention for real last. I didn't. Him rapping, he's never motivated me. I'm rap. just taking. I'm just saying in comparison to some of the niggas we listening to today, like I, the Lil Yachty's, the Kodak Blacks. I would take for real rapping all day over that. Taking either one of them. Uh, hey, I'm be real with you. I don't. I don't want to endure. If for real drops a solo rap album today, I'm gonna have the same feeling I got towards XXX Temptation. That shit gonna be solid. You know what? Give, I'm, me, give me Tyler over all these new niggas. Bro. I, don't I was gonna either. say I'm su- I'm kind of surprised that nobody said they like that album. Well, I'm gonna be real with you. Like I, I'm the type of person like I gotta get, especially nowadays because of how music happens so quick. I gotta get in a particular mode to want to listen to music. And if the only thing that's popping, the only thing that's promoting your music is the fact that you say you had a boyfriend yeah. at one point in time, oh, which I mean. He he makes a lot. He says a lot of shit. I was like, gonna say it for you. Fuck out of yeah. here. He says a lot of homoerotic homoerotic shit anyway. Because I'm a Tyler the Creator fan. I'm an Odd Future fan. Yeah. So that didn't phase me. What phased me was the fact that that's the main selling point of the album. I didn't know the album existed until that became a thing. Yeah. That well, bothers me. Could this but be see, the Frank Ocean uh, method of selling? Maybe. But see, I don't think that was his fault though. I think that that was kind of a lyric on the album that somebody else took apart. And yeah, I and got then, you, but because it's hip hop now, it's a big thing. Yeah, as a rapper know. though, we're aware when we say something, we know 
the lines that are gonna do that. Like you know, if you say, yeah. "I got a boyfriend," on the record, you gotta know. Tyler ain't naive. He's a master troll. He knows what gets a reaction yeah. out of people. But and still, mm-hmm. to this point, niggas don't know if he's actually gay or not. Or I don't believe he is. Troll. But even if he was, I wouldn't care. But it's just like I don't like the fact that that stunt is what made me aware of the album. Even though it wasn't a stunt on his part, somebody they took like the blogs took it and made it a bigger thing. Is it not a stunt on his part? I mean, maybe you know. I mean, it's when just, you write as a writer. When you write, you know the spots that punch. You know yeah. when you write something. Yeah. If I have a line that's about somebody that recently died or if it's a, you know, like, if you wrote a, a whole album and you had a line that was about something morbid, like you had a line about a Whitney Houston line mm. and it, it pertained to her death, mm-hmm. you don't know that that's going to... Yeah. So in hip-hop, writing a line about having a boyfriend, you're not... Are we really that naive to where we feel like he wrote that and didn't know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jay Z even mentioned in his own interview, he said, "I know that they're gonna take a segment of this and they're gonna put it as a headline." He was aware of it. Mm-hmm. That shit he said about Kanye ended up on TMZ. Yeah. Before yep. niggas could even get access. How did TMZ put up a video for something from Title? And Title's very on their shit about ripping shit yeah. off the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know how the news cycle works. Tyler not crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. But there could be something said for. Maybe he's trying to shift the tides as far as the way homosexuality is seen in, in hip hop. It's 2017. We got niggas thing. wearing dresses. Now, like. okay. <laughs> now, okay. We say we say there's niggas wearing dresses, but at the same time, there's never been somebody who was just like, "Bam, here it is." I mean, like they're, the uh, people who are wearing dresses are still acting like they're not gay, so it's like while they're saying they're smoking no, penis. Here's the wildest shit. Here's the wildest <laughs> shit. We're in literally the gayest time in history, For real. and For real. niggas are still trying to pretend like it's hip hop that's not aligned. No, you're using that. It's not. It's not like he said that to shed some crazy light. We know Tyler the Creator is a literal troll. He takes pride in it. Look at his fucking photos on his Twitter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like He literally goes out of his way to troll us. Mm-hmm. But because this one deals with homosexuality, we got to be a little more sensitive with it and pretend that it's not possible that he's trolling us with being gay. It's not with. It's not outside of the realm of this kid who will jump on the. He's fuck. I, I think Tyler the Creator might be forty years old, but he acts so fucking goofy <laughs> that we think he's sixteen. It's not out of the realm of possibility for people to I use. Mean, why is it? Why is it? Why is homosexuality or lesbianism such a po- like? It's not a polarizing thing in hip hop. Not anymore. You don't think no, so? no, not anymore. Not anymore. And my thing was was it wasn't. My thing, it wasn't taboo in the 90s to be gay in R&B. Tevin Campbell lost his whole fucking career. Yeah, and he was one of the best singers of his day. Yeah, he was. You know what I'm saying? He lost his entire... And you knew he was... From the time you looked at him, he was... <laughs> Uh, sweet love, like, yeah. like you, he wasn't interested in Ashley at all when yeah. we were watching Fresh Prince. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say, his girl, uh, Can We Talk, was, was more dressed, masculine than was, him. <laughs> was tougher than him. She, she hollered at him in the video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, we're to get in trouble. We act like it's I a, like this. We act like it's a polarizing thing. It's not polarizing. And you know what I'm saying? Like, And let me just say this because I had the experience of dealing with a transgender. Nigga, you gonna get these jokes, my nigga. You wanna be treated? This how I treat everybody. Nigga, your ass gonna get scold on if you do something around me. If I was scold on my mama, God bless her soul. This is like a PSA. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about like when my mama was going down the hill, we were joking with each other. This is my mama. Yeah. Nigga, you finna get these jokes, bro. Yeah. You wanna? That's how you know. I, that's how you know I acknowledge you, nigga. If, if if you just walking by and I say. Oh my God! It's one of them things. Oh shit. no! I'm going. No, I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm gonna acknowledge you. Say, my nigga, you uh, don't wear heels next. Don't wear heels next time. <laughs> but see, here's a, and you. see, I'm, I know this has nothing to do like with a hip hop conversation, but just Didn't on that thought- point. Huh? Yeah, he did. I like this type of shit. I know, but on that point, it's like I think a lot of gay and, and transgender people think like we're automatically supposed to react to what's going on with you the way you want us to react. No, True. Megazar's way of reacting is different than the way I'm going to react. When I first met my first transgender, it was a friend of mine that I knew since I was a kid. And then I, I hadn't seen him in a few years. All of a sudden, I see him and he and he became a she. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I kept it moving. I didn't say nothing. Megazar's way is different than mine. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he doesn't like transgenders. That's just how he deals with it. He cracks on me. I'm a, he, I'm like I'm his little brother. He cracks jokes on me. My thing is, 
if you're in the place to be, I'm not going to sit and act like you got a disease. But if your ass do something worthy of getting lit up, you're getting lit up, bro. Yeah. No matter who you are, has nothing to do with yeah, it. what. Nigga, I got a transgender uncle, nigga, and that nigga <laughs> roast, roast my ass, nigga. <laughs> hey, I'll be real with you. That nigga better not bring them jokes, nigga. I'm like, yo ass, <laughs> smooth up, nigga. I mean, that nigga's just, going to fire. Yo ass. Hey, that's, hey. That's, but that, that's the culture. Invite me to your barbecue, that's, nigga. That's where I come from. It's like, do you. Like, my thing is, is no, nobody, bro, we're 2017. Air quotations, you're free to do what you want to do. Yeah. Like, nigga, I don't know any homosexual niggas getting, any black homosexual was getting beat down because they homo. Like, we done with that in the hood. Niggas ain't working. Niggas, yeah. niggas is playing 2K. You know what Real I'm saying? Shit. Niggas is doing other shit. Niggas is stealing computers and making them better than the computers in the stores. Like, <laughs> niggas is into some other shit. Like, niggas ain't work. Maybe in the 80s, you had to lift a piano in the daytime so niggas wouldn't suspect nothing. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we, like, come on. We, we passed that shit. <laughs> Hip hop? Come on. We're like, first thing you know, if you're dealing with fake niggas, you already know it's that type of shit going on in hip hop. Yeah. Unimaginable <laughs> shit we couldn't fathom. Yeah, so, come on. Bro. But also, but also too, the fact that Tyler making a comment like that into 2017 and they blowing up the way it did, but didn't you know make what? Sense it, don't, it don't beat that's us. Probably why, that, it, that's, that's probably why. That's probably it. Don't beat us. us. Yeah, we're not in charge of any media. It ain't that's no. not us. Like that type of shit. If Jay Z said, you know, every now and then, maybe. We get to do now. That would be fucking new. <laughs> That's and new. to be real with you, because he's not the he's not the type of figure that Tyler the Creator is. That's what because I'm saying. Because like y'all are saying, yes, he he is a big ass troll. He did say there was some interview he did with somebody where he did say that when he was fifteen that he did have a boyfriend. Well, so when, I when guess he, there's there's a good portion of people who at fifteen don't know what they are. They they don't really claim anything because they're trying to figure it out. It's like hmm. Uh, those those are people who take themselves too serious. Yeah. Cause as a fifteen year old, let me tell you what I knew: my motherfucking room better be clean, <laughs> and my grades better be good. But you know ain't gonna lie, saying? niggas is, is smashing at fifteen. Like, no, I mean I was doing, I was fucking I was around. Niggas, niggas, is, niggas is I fucking think around. you, I think I, was I mean, too, but yeah. that was that was uh, you icing have a, on the cake. Like that wasn't my life. You have a pretty good idea of what you like when you're fifteen, though. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. No, but there's some people who are still pretty confused, still trying to figure I it mean, out. I mean, but then, but then, I you mean, know what? Nah, nah. Then, I will say in this co in this culture in 2017, yeah, because yeah, you got a nigga who decided he wanted to turn into a woman at 60. Yeah. So yeah, you are dealing yeah. with some different. So it's like I'm just saying that I'm saying the there, there is a possibility that there's some people out there who don't have it as as together as we did when we were kids. That's a fact. Niggas so it's are, like, I ain't gonna lie, cause we all put. Uh, to be real with you, we pushing everything back, including that that maturity of knowing who you are. Yeah, we pushing mm -hmm. getting married back. We pushing having children back. Hell, every day, every day in this society, back. we're finding out new things about ourselves that we don't like. I'm having to change every day now. Shit that I was doing two years ago, I can't be doing no more. Certain oh, aspects. Shit. So just don't like, wear no heels, my nigga. Nah, I gotta you, get out the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you threaten, you threaten to get off the show a lot. I can't like. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's the one. I don't mm, know. If, if, if I show up in heels, if like, I come to the show in heels, that's don't it. take it personal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking, <laughs> so speaking of niggas in heels, um, <laughs> Migos, they had a <laughs> they had a lot of um, crossovers the earlier part of the year, and one of them was with Katy Perry. Oh, is that I got shit? roasted for this. See, we talked about this on the episode. I was on. We yes, yeah. I got we did. For this. We did. Um, they also had a collaboration with uh, Frank Ocean and Calvin Harris. Yeah. Personally, I didn't like their feature on that. I didn't like That's them. That's a dope-ass um, record, though. I love the song. I hate them on it. It's yeah. a little forced. Um, it is very. Yeah, it definitely was forced. Exactly. It didn't take me out of it, though, because that record was just, that record is dope. Exactly. And they sound crazy as fuck on Katy Perry's song, like, why? Yeah. I want to talk well, about just, that. Well, we are, yeah, we already talked. I, I'm going to let y'all go, because I already yeah, said because I, that. One thing that I, I'm so confused about when it comes to the Migos is, like, they kind of hold the culture in their hands right now yes. so they weren't like hurting for more exposure so why I don't understand why they would feel the need to be I can answer that well, I, I, yeah okay I got they, something for that too go ahead they niggas from like at the end of the day regardless of these are niggas who were literally making music for just niggas for the majority of their career sure N now niggas will blink and pretend that they've had the coach in their palms. No, this just happened. Yeah. yeah. And the catch is these are still niggas, some young niggas from Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. Like, these ain't even Atlanta niggas. These are Gwinnett County <clears throat> niggas. Yeah. So you're dealing with some niggas who, honestly, they don't even know what the fuck they got. Like, they trying to get as far as they can because something as simple as Donald Glover shouting you out 
changed mm-hmm. their life. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't care what niggas say. Yeah. They, that, that song was doing its thing, but they pushed it to another level. Yeah. Yeah. It's the I difference know, between yeah. being number 40 on the charts and being number 10 on the charts. Mm-hmm. And eventually it, number it's, one. Number one. It's a difference between those. A difference in the way people treat you. So I think with them being Gwinnett County niggas getting used to this thing, th- they willing to accept, oh, Katy Perry, that's another big name shit. Uh, a nigga shouting us out put us here. Shit, imagine what Katy Perry, mm-hmm. they're not they're not even really into that side of the culture. Yeah, so man. they didn't know Katy Perry don't really hold no weight over there. Not anymore. Or she <laughs> really? Hell no. Is no, she really? Hell no. Because I, I even said, because I said that on your show, I was saying like, when it comes to the pop world, like Katy Perry was always ne- uh, under Lady Gaga, yes. Taylor Swift, yep. and all of and that shit. She wasn't Lady even number Gaga's one in that world. Currently at, yep. And she's still under Lady Gaga. So right. that yeah. shows you. Like, nah, nigga, she's it's not. They didn't know, though, because when you don't know no better, that's like if you a white guy and you say, man, I want to get a dude on my album to get the streets, they might go grab Pharrell. Yeah. They mm-hmm. don't know that Pharrell doesn't speak for the streets. Mm-hmm. Rather than grab Gucci, man, they're going to grab Pharrell because Pharrell seems like, damn, he's one of them. Yeah. You got to be a part of the culture. So I think they ran with Katy Perry and didn't realize they were being used. And they're, on, not, and, they're clearly not students of, mm. of what they do. You know yeah. What I'm Most young mm-hmm. niggas ain't. In this in this era, yeah, you're right. Yeah. In not. this generation, you, you're very right. And, and and also too, you got to think because I said this the other day, and it, and it goes so far past just music. You got to think, even even um, that's, okay, I'll use it as an example in the film world. There's a lot of people being left behind. A lot of these old studios and production companies are taking a lot of L's this year because they're trying to stick to the traditional forms of what film was years ago. Mm-hmm. Putting movies out in the summer, blockbusters out in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of those movies bombed this year. A lot of, a lot of movies are refusing to even want to work with Netflix because they're because Netflix is ruining the traditional model of how movies are put out. But Netflix is winning, and them niggas is, is taking L's at the box office. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing in the music industry with a lot of these record executives still trying to do the same shit that worked in the mid 2000s mm-hmm. right now and so they're they're thinking like okay i'm in this position to finally do something that worked 10 years ago maybe it'll still work for mm-hmm. me without realizing like the industry's ever changing mm-hmm. and i think for them their issue was like like cass said it's like there's certain things that still look like oh i made it the white pop star yeah, yeah. wanting the rap cosign that used to be a thing that was like once you get that you made it Especially if it's a young white girl. Yeah. Like, that puts you in another stratosphere at that time. Mm -hmm. What I think black people need to figure out that, nigga, they need us. Like, just being 1,000, they need us. Like, Mm -hmm. we don't... They coming to you for a reason. Like, yeah. The Migos didn't say, let's get Katy Perry on culture. Exactly. Yeah. Katy Perry said, get, let's get her, and we don't even know what the fuck that's all that song. The song might have actually been bigger if it was a Migos record and not a Katy Perry record, honestly. It would have been in their realm of cool because the Migos are still cool. Yeah. yeah. Katy Perry's not in the realm She's of reaching pop like a motherfucker like right now. Old school pop star that was built from the ground up in a goddamn lab. You Britney, know, Spears. Britney Spears. Uh-huh. Jessica yeah. Simpson. They're not working because the people who are building them are old men. Yep. Yeah. They don't know what's popping. The Migos know Migos, what beats uh, to pick. The Migos pick. are the pop stars. The yes, Migos they are. are exactly. the stars. Right now, because yes, they urban are. Urban culture is now, we're just now, like, that's like the other day somebody had said, uh, uh, Jay-Z said, and then me and somebody was having a uh, conversation over Rilo House yeah. when the nigga was like, uh, Pat was like, you know, now we the number one blah, 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 always, nigga, now. Yeah. We've always, always been. been. Niggas up. need Billboard to tell them, like, bruh. Yeah. Nigga, you can just go back to when Elvis Presley. Bit Lil Richard entire steez. Straight up. Bit his entire, his whole stick and get up. That's why Lil Richard had to play gay. Well, he didn't play gay. Nah, I was about to say. That nigga I'm did a hell of a job, nigga. <laughs> that, Ooh, that nigga I'm need an Oscar. Because that nigga look like Holiday Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is the second time since we started doing podcasting together. You to mention Holly Hart. You gotta let the shit go, Holiday my nigga. Hart was a pretty good movie. Whoa, 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 and that, that's how you know I'm not listening. That's how you know I'm not. I'm not homophobic. That's a good movie, okay. nigga. A good movie. It was pretty decent. Come on, fam. You done Yo, brought up okay movies. for a for a BT on a Sunday. That's actually a decent movie. You want to see Holiday Hart? You want to see OGs for the fifty fifth time, nigga? Shit, I was happy to see anything. And Vink Rhames in a dress. Pretty funny. That yeah, shit was man. hard. That or Baby Boy. I'll take Baby Boy all day. Oh my God. Baby Boy all day or Holiday Heart. Holiday Heart might be bad. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holiday Heart. Yeah, right, the writer hey, hey, for Holiday Heart. Who are you? Is I don't even know who you are anymore, <laughs> my nigga. No, the, <laughs> writer for, the writer for Holiday Heart is better than the writing for Baby Boy. Just for the opening scene alone, Tyrese 
in a fetal position as a baby. Yeah. Boy, that you talking about? Hey, you talking about literal? That nigga metaphor was literal as hell. Oh my god. <laughs> Say, that's man. one thing, man. I'm glad. Say, thank God for Black Hollywood, man. We getting some. Thank God for. We Easter doing Ray. better. Thank we God doing better. For, yes. We are doing better. Yeah, we took you all the way off track. That's yeah, okay. we sure did. But that, that that's typically okay. what happens. <laughs> that's all right. So, um, so it's been a few months since Kendrick Lamar put out "Damn." Mm-hmm. Um, and we just killed at the VMAs last night. I didn't watch it. I ain't watch it neither. Nah. Yeah. Um, I'm I, sure he. I'm sure he did really well though. He's a great performer. Why you just be trying to argue me down that Kendrick Lamar steeds ain't changed? Man, that nigga looking like a star. That, yeah. Niggas and see, that's down. what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it, so his he, dress was wet. That was this weird nigga shit he had. Yeah. On, though, but he looked like he looks like a star now. And what were you about to say, Kim? <laughs> well, what I was gonna say well, is they, his um his you can definitely see there's been a transformation. Oh, yeah. Since his first album to now. Um, and it's kind of like he's he's gone through different iterations of himself. I kind of want to know what y'all think he's going to do next, if you have any sort of way of making a prediction. Well, I'm going to be real oh. with you. I'm going to be real with you. Like, I, I've done a pretty good job of predicting where he's going to go up until this point. I, I, I knew after To Pimp a Butterfly he was listening to the noise because it, I feel like that album divided his fan base. After Good Kid, yes. Mad City, it was unanimous. Everybody fucked with him. Yes. To Pimp a Butterfly kind of cut that shit in half. It did. And a lot of people stopped fucking with him. It was like, mm-hmm. this is too much. I knew for his next album he was going to have to get back to rapping. Mm-hmm. I knew he was going to uh, He got the shit off his chest with To Pimp a Butterfly. I knew his next album he got he got to get back to rapping or else he's going to really lose people. So I mm-hmm. knew he was going to do that. I know, but you know, but I'm saying, but you know, it lost a lot of people though. Hell, they couldn't get over like it. Hollywood no. cast don't even fuck with that. But let me just say this. Let me just say this. I knew what was gonna happen on damn. But at this point, I can honestly say I don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Like he, the only thing that comes to mind for me, you probably finna say what I'm finna say. <laughs> no, you go ahead, and go first then, because. Honestly, this nigga's the like the, the, the solo iteration of Andre to me. Like he mm. is to me, you know how people say Andre is like and I'm not saying Andre is a better MC. Put that on record. Andre is a much better rapper than him to me. Yeah. Um I agree with that. But here's the catch though. He's doing what Andre never could do. He's making his own he flying his own fucking flag. Mm. I think his next step probably ain't even gonna be to rap. That might mm. be kinda wild. But like just from the look of the way he's dressing, um, I could easily see him doing some not similar in sonically or nothing, but like some a love yeah. below shit, some shit little, we seen from all the way. Damn, was stank, nigga, damn, was stank on you yeah. all the way though, because you got to remember, niggas can easily say Magna Carta was this or this was American Gangster, but this ain't that and that ain't this. You know, like you could say Kingdom Come is American Gangster, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but no. this ain't that and that ain't this. Oh, no. I, damn, is stank on you. This ain't that, but, that but ain't it's just name. it's just he's going so hard as an MC right now though. I don't see him. I don't see him stop. I don't see his next project being a straight up singing effort. No, nah, you know I ain't on the Andre. He's he he's like going so hard for the crown right now. I don't see him letting up all that Man, off that Prince, right now. I'm just tell you like this: Kendrick is in that spot. I've seen Nas in that spot. I've seen Jay Z in that spot. I've seen mm-hmm. any. I've seen Pac in that spot. I have seen Biggie to a degree in that spot. He in that spot where he letting his nuts hang. It don't matter what he do next. Straight up. And it don't move. matter what he do next. Yeah. He's the number one rap nigga. Yeah, Hands right now. Down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's true. Hands down. He going to do whatever whatever if he feels like doing, he going to do. And my thing is he finna keep hitting these niggas upside their head with the rap tip because he got it on lock now. He's literally the number one guy. He's number yeah. one. He's the oh, number one guy. Time out. Sidebar. We had this conversation a few months ago. What? Where we said I said where I said that I felt like Kendrick is now at the top spot. Do you feel mm-hmm. that way now? Cuz at first you weren't. Uh, Drake definitely lost a lot of stock. Yes, indeed. Um, his 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 wheels ain't in. Uh, and the only reason I needed I needed to see that was because I needed him to break that last barrier, which was the sales, and to see more life not last as long. Cause I ain't gonna lie, more life life span was short as fuck. Short than the bitch. Because of it's to come what came Greg out after, and then also I think Drake is trying to do something strange, which is like tout himself as this this music connoisseur or something like what was that project he dropped that was Sade um it was like Sade tracks 
that he fused oh, with yeah. his. Yeah. Wait, when when did this happen? Yeah, he did. It, it was some. Yeah, I missed it, it. It was damn near like he did his own gray tape. You remember yeah. how the black album you had the gray yeah. tape with the he did oh, his own. When did he do that? Yeah. That was a few months ago. Really? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't n- number one. Nigga, that it was only like a few songs. It wasn't. Oh, so those are the. Remember I told you he dropped some songs recently and they didn't do shit. No, I don't think no. He didn't drop these as like singles or anything. It was literally. It was just like a little cloud. No, right. but that, but I'm, that's what I mean. Like he dropped some songs recently, like not too long ago, and they didn't do shit. So maybe that may that's what it. it was. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe a lot of these young. I'm, 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 no, go ahead. I, I love, a lot of these young dudes today love to say, "I'm not a rapper. I'm an artist." You know what I'm saying? It's a cop the fuck out. Does that even as if, mean? as if, as if. But Kendrick is bringing this shit back to rapping. Yeah. Their their flag holder for the last eight years is not the number one nigga anymore. The rapping nigga is the number one nigga now. Straight up. The rapping. And then Jay-Z reaffirmed that this rapping shit is going to be here forever with 444. Straight up. He affirmed, hey, bro, as long as niggas is doing this, that shit over there is always going to be over there. It's always not going to not gonna, it's gonna be on the second stage on Coachella. This shit is going to be on the <laughs> first stage of Coachella. You talking about a 47-year-old at 47. Drake has never rapped as good as... Jay Z rapped on four forty four. Never in his career. It's a common thread though between great niggas though. To be honest with you, they take risks. That's a common thread with them niggas. Yeah. They do what the fuck they want to do. And I think Drake found a formula. He stuck. No, no, to no. I'm not. I'm not. And, no, no, no. I'm. I, I ain't. I'm not. No, I'm this not, I'm not what you saying. Because if, this ain't a. This ain't a. If someone put Drake in the top ten, I couldn't argue that. I mean, not nah, hell, no. Nah, he ran the fucking Billboard yeah, for eight I, years. I could argue that. Without rap, without he wasn't rapping. Top in ten. What stuff. what top ten list we talking about? MCN? Yeah. I mean, no, no just rap, no That's rapping. Period. Not could. MC. Just top ten rappers of all time. If Drake he's is saying about what Drake, what I say about Lil Wayne, it's no way in fuck's sake that he's in my top ten. But if a nigga said he was in a top ten, I could see why. Yeah, you know, I, like I couldn't, I couldn't deny that. I couldn't be pissed at it. I could definitely tell you why he's not in mine, but yeah. I couldn't be pissed at it. Cause sometimes, man, the stats are there. That's just yeah. like with Kendrick Lamar. I don't fuck with Kendrick Lamar, but it's no way I I can't say he's not in the top ten. Yeah, real it's shit. It's impossible. So it's it's <laughs> one of them. I, I think really. I feel I feel what you're saying because even with the shit that I don't like, I hate to pimp a butterfly. I get it though. That's yeah. what you do as an artist. Keep in mind the reason I don't like niggas like Kevin Hart is because they don't take risk. I hate that in all crafts. If you don't take risk and you start getting to the point where a nigga grandmama can listen to nigga, this is a counterculture. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why niggas like as much as I love Chance outside the booth. I think he represents counterculture as a human being musically. That coloring book shit doesn't push book. no I hated motherfucking that. bars. I'm, I am, I'm a Chance fan and I didn't like it. Like, exactly. I, I am too. I hate it. Sound like after all his music outside of acid rap. Sound like an after school. See, acid rap was was it was a was That's dope. That's what I said. Outside of acid yeah. rap, that shit yeah. was good. But everything sounds like an after school special now. It's like PBS. <laughs> Hip hop shouldn't be cute. You say PBS and he actually remixed the Arthur theme song. He like did. that shit is crazy. That shit Come on. But that's him. It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. Like don't get me wrong, that has its lane, but you can't make. Today niggas get it twisted with their favorite being the best. Nah, bro. Yeah, I hate My that favorite player is Camelo Anthony in the league. Nigga, he is not the best player in the NBA. You, I, there is By such a thing as separating your favorite from what you think is the greatest, and but a lot of people not, don't do that in, shit. You know why they don't, a lot do, this people shit? don't do that shit? Because we've uh, we niggas have been allowed to run with this objective shit for too long. Yeah. Oh, the uh, uh, everything is subjective. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. subjective. Or I'm being that's objective, another cop out. You know what I'm Fuck like, that the shit. Subjective shit is. No, like, you like, sit you sit a stick figure next to a Picasso. Anybody of any figure, sound logic knows the difference. That's very true. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of uh, stick figures and Picassos, Lil Yachty, uh, Loop, no, Lil <laughs> Fiasco. Oh, oh, oh that nigga's a uh, see you, you see that he, nigga's a Picasso stick figure. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, yeah, that's <laughs> that's actually where I was going with that because when he first came out, he came out at a time where. I didn't really, un- I didn't really feel like I understood the hip hop that was coming out. I didn't feel like I could relate, but I felt like I could sort of relate with Lupe a little bit. And his music came at a time where I was trying to figure shit out. And so, um, Food and Liquor was mm. one of my favorite classic, albums that year. Classic album. That is still today probably uh, one of my favorite albums. Do you want to kick this off? Do you want to kick this one off? Okay. The Cool. Okay. The Cool <laughs> yeah. is a great album. It's Not great. my mm-hmm. favorite of his, but 
like listening that. to where he was going, I just assumed the next one was going to go yep. in that direction until I saw all of the shit going on around the label and that shit. I was like, okay, yeah. he about See, to just drop real. some bullshit. Megazar actually has a lot did. of insight on what happened with lasers. I mean, um, to me, Lupe Fiasco argu- has arguably the best talent of any nigga that's ever right. Okay, me and Cass say all the time he could have been the greatest MC he of all time. Been, he could have. I believe that. Easily. No, Easy. I think you got to put that caveat. Easily been the best rapper yes. of all time. Easily. But, and me and Ja'Cory, we saw this shit from day one. He don't have no heart. He don't. No, he doesn't have no competitive spirit. None. Nope. For all that genius he has with a pen, that nigga has no competitive spirit. Mm-hmm. Even at the end, he said, my man, blah, 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 wants me to hold the crown. I told him I can't do it. I'm like, what? Nah, see, that, that's that. You know, the end credits of, uh, the yeah. end credits yeah. of uh, Food and Liquor, yeah. before the bonus tracks come on. Like, in the bonus, like, my thing was the original version of Food and Liquor Oh, my was God. Right? Man, yeah. that shit was remarkable. The simple fact that theme music to a drive-by was not the intro. That's oh the, God! The leak version and the version we got was still dope. Yeah, yeah, real you shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I, I heard the leak version of "I Am Nostradamus." That shit's phenomenal. Then I heard "I Am in Nostradamus." Like, <laughs> no, nigga, that shit wasn't. <laughs> yeah, together it would have been Nas' best album. Like, if, have it had it been like, because Lost Tapes is a part of that. Like, if mm-hmm. it had been what yeah. it was, it would have been his best album for sure, easily for no sure. Doubt. Then we heard what "I Am" was. Then we heard what Nostradamus was. But we heard the leaked version of Lupe shit. Then we heard the one that came out. They both was great. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Isn't it, but Lupe had it. Like, I don't know That what, nigga had the metaphors, the steez. Performance. The every, yeah. yeah. Every day. Still my favorite uh, yeah. mixtape rapper ever. Oh, yes. By far. Oh, yeah. His yeah, mixtape shit will go to, That's the shit that I knew. I was like, this nigga here is special. Mm-hmm. You know? He's special. Like I told a nigga today, Kendrick still can't rap better than Lupe. Hell no. no he hell just nah. makes better songs and he puts this shit well together and he wants it more than Lupe. He got ever he got the heart. He be, yeah. he blatantly has that that heart. Lupe was was tired when he got in the game. Like that's crazy that you Cuz he said I would say after food and liquor. Cuz well, he, 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 he said he said Yeah, escape. he said he was going to do 3 albums and he was going to be done. His third album was supposed yeah, to be called Loop In. Yeah, Loop mm-hmm. In. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he was already plotting his way out before he even got in. That nigga couldn't and what's so crazy the shit people will actually and I ain't gonna lie to you, millennials are the most. Uh, we have the the weakest, like we weak as fuck. We hate calling the spade a spade. Yeah. And niggas will say, "Well, man, the label did that to Lupe. Nah, like nigga, Nas nah. didn't run into Columbia. Like Yo got. I'm not saying Yo Gotti's a great rapper either, but I'm saying niggas who endured. Yo Gotti had to buy himself out of two D. Yeah. So you having a Yo Gotti? Okay, with- you may know Yo Gotti now for down in the DMs. Yo Gotti been out here. For a but he long, 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 long fucking time. time dealing with some crazy label being, uh, shit. Yeah, had being to buy himself JJ out Uncle of two niggas. Nigga. Yes, Bro. nigga. Yep. he's a, your nigga. favorite yes. artist. Shit, future. Yeah. Your favorite artist go through this. This is a common thread. Getting fucked in the music industry is a promise. Yeah. No it's doubt. like this. Yes. That's why they keep that bringing shit is young promise, niggas my nigga. in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if how like that's not a that's not gonna save him in this conversation. He let us down. Yeah, like, it's not Atlantic's fault because Atlantic does what Atlantic does. Exactly. You know? They want a hit record. They want and with Lupe's talent, this is the part that nobody ever brings up. With Lupe's talent, ability, his voice, his steez, in a world where Kanye West gave us hits. Lupe could have gave us hits. Yeah, hits galore. Without a doubt. He and was rebelling for no fucking risk. It, like, he was raging against the machine, nigga. Give Atlanta, Atlantic two records to what they want. Yeah. yeah. He took, nigga, first I, and foremost, a lot of people don't know this. Off with that nigga. Yeah, but here's the thing a lot of people don't know this. Two of. Two of uh, B.O.B.'s biggest records Nothing actually went to yeah. Lupe first. There's actually leaked versions of them yeah. on the internet if you look for them. And he, tur- and he turned both walls. of those records down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, was like, it wasn't like people weren't giving him shit to like try and prosper on. He was just being hard to deal with. And what's so funny about it is nothing on you still fits in Lupe's realm. Lupe did have a kind of poppy. He rapped over Gorilla's beats. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's not like this. I could Superstar. see if Jay Z saw nothing on you. Superstar and said, for Fuck sure. Bro, he rapped over Daydream. Like, what is nigga Daydreaming is? So yeah. that's my point. He was rebelling against the system that was built for him to win. Yeah. Give them the BLB shit. Yeah. And on your album, turn their ass up. Because that's all labels want, nigga. Yeah. They I mean, want it ain't like, it ain't like he couldn't do it. Like, 
He's done it with a weak record. He still sold two hundred thousand units out the gate. What the fuck is your my sunshine? Now I was just about to say that. I love that you. I love that shit. Just like some shit that he that B L B would have done. I can't. I can't leave. That's that's radio. That nigga's a true. That nigga's a true rebel without a cause, bro. He's rebelling against his god. Exactly. I'm gonna quote. I'm gonna quote my homegirl Raven. Shout to my homegirl Raven for making the Dallas sidekicks. You know what I'm saying? Dance. Sports. Oh yeah, that's right. Shout yeah. out to Raven. She said that nigga looked like when she said when she seen that nigga dressed like Aang from Last Airbender Avatar, <laughs> she knew it was over. <laughs> she knew it was over. Like, yo, oh, man, it's, it's the fuck is he doing? It's, it's just he I mean, me and Cass, me and Cass, literally, uh, we we had we we counted down on our show a few episodes ago. The top ten niggas who had the most potential to, to be the greatest, but fucked it up. Mm. And Lupe was number one on that. Yes, list. Yeah. Lupe was number one on that list. I even was following him when he was doing that uh, Japanese cartoon shit. Like I even was trying to let him live on that. Mm-hmm. Like I just feel like there's so, there was so much squandered potential. And the thing that's so fucked up is he actually put out a really good album with Tetsuo and Youth. I almost didn't it was listen cool. to. I almost didn't listen to it. Just because I was like, okay, fuck Lupe at you this point. You were done point. at that point. I get it. But like I, how I am, yeah. It's like he he literally has to do. In order for me to even like think about it, it has to be nigga had to tell me this the best shit that anybody has ever That's done. That's the ever only ever reason why I listen because you know was, what it is. I had an auntie who used to put like she used to make potato salad. Right, <laughs> shit was terrible. Like it would have <laughs> egg shells in it, my nigga. God, it damn. was fucked oh, up. Shit. Damn. After three Christmases of this shit. On the fourth Christmas, nigga, we not even trying. Right. I'm skipping that. Give me the green bean casserole. Yep. Lupe Fiasco is that potato salad. I'm not <laughs> trying that shit no more. <laughs> I'm not. Give me the, give me the, say, the Where Migos are the, are the green bean casserole. I will reach for them before I reach for Lupe because he done gave me three times. Yes, nigga. And see, yes. and see what makes I, it worse. You don't know what makes it worse is now that he's over the hill. Now that we don't give a fuck about this nigga, this nigga want to come out and say like, "Oh, Kendrick's like my son." Like, he has he. It's okay. like, dog, you don't want to compete. You you bowed out of this shit. Nah, nigga, and now when you see nigga, son, if you want to know what having a and, son is, and like now you want, and now you see niggas prospering doing what you were supposed to be doing, and you want to get mad. Niggas That's what that pisses say, me off. Say yeah. niggas that stay down because everybody. If you ever notice, everybody that ends up being the shit. Stayed down. Yeah. Even the sorry niggas, Fetty Wap, stayed down. <laughs> yeah. Stayed down, nigga. Yeah, you nah, can't. You can't sit down. And that. That's. He you. tried to do what J Electronica did, but you have to be J Electronica to. Like you really have to not give a fuck. And yeah. J Electronica and ain't J Electronica no more because you're finally hearing niggas say, "Man, fuck that." When that nigga, when something comes with J Electronica, when you mentioned him at one point, it was like, "Man, I show hope he drop an album." Mm-hmm. Man, I show. Now it's to the point where it's like. Man, fuck that nigga, bro. Same thing. Jay Electronica is saying, fuck Jay Electronica. I'm Jay Real. Mm-hmm. I understand it now. Like, he, he, done, he done put that <laughs> shit to exactly. the side. Exactly. It, yeah. it don't matter. Like, I feel like we're in the age where you cannot take that long to put out something before people don't, don't give a fuck. There's the kid. There's certain people who can do part. it, though. You can do it, but this is, this is, this it's gotten easier and it's gotten harder. It's gotten easier because you don't have to put out content. Doing something. It's content now. Mm-hmm. Like, black youngster don't have... Fuck a record. Him getting on her saying, little bitty bitch. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> that is content. That's what's Very so stupid. Artists yeah. be thinking you got to drop like Wayne. Yeah. Wayne had it hard. Which is what's fucking Drake up, content. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel like Drake would be a way bigger artist if he wasn't going so... Like, if he wasn't dropping a, I'm gonna a tell you what he be every doing fucking wrong. year. He does that, but he don't... He's trying to be... Jay-Z and them are the death of that type of... Yeah. Uh, that type of... That untouchable... I wonder what he eat in his mm-hmm. lifetime. The, it, that's the end of that era, my nigga. Yep. And Jay-Z yeah. stretched that shit out for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And oh, that yeah. elevator incident kind of showed that it's not forever. The mm-hmm. times are changing to the point where yeah. if Jay-Z was in this room, niggas gonna see it. Kendrick yeah. kind of in that world, though. We don't know everything he's doing. You, you know what? It's gonna be very, very difficult for him to sustain that. Yeah. It's a, it's a thing that you can pull off the weekend, pulled it off. For what three projects and then for the trilogy and then even Kissland and but say now he out here yeah mm-hmm. it's that's unsustainable. Oh, Kendrick is out here now, bro. When you see him dressed and shit, he dressed in now like yeah. he's out here. He, he like damn to. damn has made him that guy now. Yeah, he's gonna have to be out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and see here's the thing. I do you think do you think like I know what my answer is. I'm just curious what you guys uh, what you what you all would feel. Do you feel like at this point? Drake is gonna have to go at Kendrick to get his spot back. No, nah, nah, or is he just? Gonna, or, I, I, got, I got two, no. two uh-huh. things. No, no. Nah, nah. I'm gonna tell you all Drake got to do. Drake got to give niggas another so far gone, and he'll yes, be, he. that's all he got to do. Give niggas. 
just go back to that exact same formula. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he he get. I don't know if he'll get it back, but the battle of damn show be on. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he's even worried about that. Nah, I think mm-hmm. I think nah, the, I, the no, fact I will, I will say this: the fact that he lost the crown is bothering this, this him. This is what it, this is what he does notice. His eight year reign is over. We didn't notice that it existed. He knew it existed. He knew it was there. Mm-hmm. That eight year fucking Billboard record. He knew it existed. We didn't know it existed. Niggas was like, nigga, this is amazing. When he lost it, yeah. we didn't know it existed before yeah. that. He knew it existed. He just lost that. His, he put out a record that was actually pretty fucking good. It's the highest quality of what he does. Mm-hmm. Niggas slept on it. That shit had a shelf life of three weeks. Pretty maybe. much. Maybe. Two. Kendrick, Kendrick. The, like, the soon as soon as Kendrick came with damn, that shit was sh- cut short. That I That's told true. him, even when we would have conversations, Kendrick ain't no billboard, nigga. Like, it don't matter. Like, I know rappers, rappers love. He hippity hop. Dop. I feel that. <laughs> billboard matters, though, too. Mm-hmm. It's stopping. It's finna shift. Where it's not finna matter because Jay-Z just made it unimportant by speaking yeah, yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. But Billboard still mattered up to that point. And Kendrick went and beat him in that. He sees that. Because he from the school of, regardless of what niggas want to believe, yeah. he's from the school of Jay-Z now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He do, he's doing, he knows for a fact, throughout hip-hop history, and, and, and nerd niggas hate this a lot. You know, hipster niggas, nerd niggas hate yeah. this a lot. Is that hip-hop has always heralded the street nigga, and it always yeah. will. It always it's will. very difficult for a nigga who's not from that world to make that top 10 echelon. Yeah. If you go through that top 10, all of these niggas are from hoods. Yeah. Every single one of them. Drake ain't from that. He was an outsider, and he ain't from that world. So he knew, I got to beat niggas in a statistical way. Mm-hmm. I got to spend eight years on the billboards. I'm going to have to be a pop and rap superstar. But see, now, the rap the rap shit is back. Yeah. What do you do now that yeah. rapping is rap? Because mm-hmm. Jay-Z, they called Jay-Z the Glastonbury Festival. They didn't call Kanye. And Kanye is the more worldly, yeah. easier to digestible True. for white people guy. True. Why do they call Jay-Z? Because he represents rap culture. Kanye West does not. So I'm going to take this. Man, y'all got an applause button in this bitch? Like, <laughs> <laughs> preach, my nigga. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be right back. Okay. And we are back. Um, one thing that's kind of new this year is uh, there was a show created by a complex called Everyday Struggle mm-hmm. um, that stars DJ Academics, um, Joe Budden, and Nadeska, who was already on Complex for complex news. Right. Um, there have been lots of uh, rappers and artists who've been interviewed on the show. Um, this is kind of the first thing of its kind since 106 and Park was actually something people actually watched, in my yeah. opinion. Okay. But do y'all feel like this is going to actually move the culture back into people caring about what rappers have have to say and actually want to sit down and watch an interview like we did back when BET was kind of at its height. Personally, I don't see the show lasting past the year. I don't either. Um, now, let me go ahead and clarify my statement. Um, when it first came out, um, I was really interested in it. Uh, separately, outside of the Everyday Struggle platform, I listen to the Joe Budden podcast every week, mm. and I will watch all of GJ Academics' YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. So separately, I, I enjoy both their platforms and blo- both personalities. Together, I don't know what made Complex think that them two together would be sustainable. I don't understand what like made them think that. Um, it was rough in the beginning, and then there was a good point. There was a good point, maybe like a week or two later, where they were figuring it out and it was getting good. Mm-hmm. And now it's at a point to where it feels like it's just chaos. It is hard for me to watch chaos on that level. Like Joe Button. Most of the time, doesn't even seem like he wants to be there. Um, it literally seems like he's just coming to collect a check. And, yeah. like, and when you can feel that, it's hard for me to personally watch it. And DJ Academics, it feels like he's in a world that he's not prepared for mm-hmm. because he's going up against somebody that's going to actually challenge him. He's not just talking to his computer now and then people comment at the bottom. He's dealing with somebody who's going to challenge what he says and challenge him as a person. Like, he, like Joe Budden represents the old school way of, like, Nigga, we didn't fuck with you back then, yeah. and I gotta sit. But I gotta sit across from you and talk hip hop with you. Get right. the fuck out of here! Like right. we laughing niggas like you. That's what Joe Budden represents, and that's what he. And that's what DJ Academics represents to someone like Joe. Yeah. So on a certain level, I don't even feel like Joe rep, like respects he DJ doesn't. Academics, and so he that doesn't. makes it harder for me to watch as well. And it doesn't make it easier when Nadeska look like she's annoyed at everything that's going on too. She is. Yeah. So either. The show is going to be canceled by the end of the year, or they're going to have different hosts. Uh, me personally, I watch. 
I, could, I, don't, I never watch an entire show, but I'm glad they broke it up into segments because, like, I can yeah. see if I want to watch yeah. this segment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, I liked it when it started out, but it's already ran its course. And I feel like, I feel like what Justin Hutt is doing, like for the uh, yeah. hip hop like DX, even, even even though even though he his ass be off to me, it's it's uh. I can appreciate what he does more because I know it comes from a sincere and an honest place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's educated. And it's like, you like Joe Budden is too much of a jewel to cast with that shit over there. Mm. Like even though even though we know he, he he's was, everywhere, but my thing is is he calls a spade a spade, and that's what and that's what this is that's what this thing is missing most right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. someone calling a spade a spade, and it's like Joe knows like. When when DJ academics get to talking crazy about certain things, like when he was like Carmelo Anthony looking like he's really to risk it, risk it all, and and Joe Budden is like, hold on, bro, I know these people. Yeah, like, you don't, you don't, you don't say shit like you that. don't yeah. talk like that, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then he uh, he was like, Nas, blah blah blah. And he's like, hold on, brother, like you don't know jungle. Yeah, like calm down, like you don't. Yeah. this isn't no niggas see your face now, bro. And there's like, been multiple occurrences where DJ Am- academics forgot that he's out in the real world now. People know what he look like, yeah, and it's, they it's, know where they can find you at. Little, yeah, like I said, Joe Budden knows how to. No, Joe Budden, like, but when it comes to the Migos, man, we don't fuck with that because inside of him, it's just yeah. I'm not finna acquiesce to these niggas now. There's they a, hot. Here's yeah. the weird part though, um, and it's because I live through it. Joe Budden was the weirdo of his time. He was. He was, was DJ. He was. he was. He talked shit about niggas on a computer. I, I know niggas remember this. Oh, yeah. He Joe said he made a whole list of niggas he could rap better than on his computer, which got him stolen That's real life. Yeah. Yeah. Like up, he bro. talked shit about Ransom on a computer, mm-hmm. which got his homeboy slapped nearly to death. Yeah. I ain't never seen a nigga <laughs> get slapped to death. <laughs> we should be laughing this at that. This nigga him. who <laughs> has computer-wise, and Amigo's energy was nasty with him from the beginning. Because he didn't even want to interview them. Said. True. And they didn't want to fuck with him either yeah. because, number one, he had already talked dirty about mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's odd seeing a nigga. He's not. Joe Budden wasn't sitting at the cool table in his time. True. So I feel like there should be a little bit more. It's not like, oh, academics is doing some shit I totally don't get as an old nigga. No, no, no. Don't rewrite your history because, yeah, you might be an older nigga, but you did the same sucker shit. You talked from behind the computer screen. And pay for it dearly multiple times. And anybody that knows Joe Budden's beefs, he's copped out of every single one of them. Yeah, for sure. You can't name one he ain't copped out of. So the whole, he's a real nigga in comparison to academics. academics. <laughs> Put another real nigga in there and Joe Budden acquiesces to them. He said and watched Wale say some of the most contradictory shit in history. And didn't say shit about it. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And he's done that consistently. Plus, Wale liked. and Joe Budden is the same nigga. Yeah, boy. yeah. It's true. They are. But Wale would probably choke the shit out of Joe Budden, yep. too. It's a fact. Because Joe Budden talked that tough shit, but we've never seen him win. How can you bet on a nigga you've never seen take a W? He's the opposite of Mayweather. He's 0 and 49, nigga. I'm betting on McGregor. Yeah. Like, so it's just, it's that's odd to me. And it's crazy that so many niggas, rap niggas are weird because they pick on DJ Academics, but will go on DJ Vlad show. I find that type of shit weird. Mm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They're That's, both the same. First entity. of all, he's a nerd nigga who says what he feels from behind the computer screen. Complex went and got him. DJ Vlad sparks actual beefs. Yes. He interviewed No Plug and let No Plug sit in his loft and watch him laugh about killing Bankroll Fresh as a white nigga. Yeah. And y'all niggas was okay with that. But you see a little dude. Because at the end of the day, DJ Academics is just a, a, a nerdy dude who has an appreciation for today's hip hop, mm-hmm. his version of hip hop, yeah. and he talks about it. But in in a sense, I feel like Complex knew what they were doing. Oh, took his go, okay. go ahead. They, he has a great he has a great breakdown platform. of that. They biggest competition was like number one. Nobody went to Complex dot com. Complex News was literally the only thing keeping them any life. Exactly. That's literally it. And they didn't even have a as big of a following as DJ Academics. Nope. No. They did now, not have as many subscribers. Go to Academics page. His activity level has went all the way through the fucking ground. Mm-hmm. And the reason why that is, the reason why now he has to do the Twitch videos and he's neglecting his actual pages. Mm-hmm. Yep. He neglected the war in Chirac. He neglecting DJ Academics page because I follow these niggas. Mm-hmm. They took his audience. 
And now he can't, like, at the end of the day, he can't really go back to that. And now he's just been known as this nigga who's getting disrespected every time you see him. But I his feel brand like is constantly Big ruined. Platform, like. His Big Ghost Face, let's be honest, that nigga's a, in the Twitter sphere. Because there are different, there's different celebrities on each social media medium. Because we could sit, like, we'll sit and argue about what's better, Twitter or Facebook. Guess what? Wayne Cooley killing shit on Facebook ain't doing shit on Instagram. But on Instagram, this nigga over here is killing shit. Mm -hmm. King Karan might mm -hmm. got shit over her and don't got shit over her. So, Big Ghostface on Twitter was a Twitter god. Niggas ain't going to YouTube to look at Big Ghostface nothing. And YouTube is the real world. Yeah. This ain't for social media niggas. This is for the world. My mama get on YouTube to go find music, to go find things. Mm -hmm. So, he, w he was winning the real war. Yeah. That's the real war. If you ask me that I want to win at YouTube or I want to win at Twitter, trust me, I don't want to be really on Smash, nigga. I want to be DJ Academics. <laughs> trust me. Yeah. So it's just, and it's like he's 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 clearly, like, in his Twitch videos, he's clearly upset now at what's going on with Complex. He voices yep. frustration with what happens to Complex damn near in every Twitch video now. Yep. So it's like it's only a matter of time before he realizes, like, Man, fuck this shit. Like, I didn't even want. Like, I, I don't even late. think. I don't. I don't. I don't, I, don't I don't even think he wants to be doing what he's doing right now. I think he. I think he. He wishes he was back doing the shit, yes. faceless. Nobody knowing exactly who he was and how to get to his ass behind yep. the computer. I think he w would rather be doing that shit. But now it's too late. Now yeah. complex and fucked him all the way up. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't built for this. Um, I don't think it's like somebody it. broke the Damn. glass on Zordon. Like. Well, the, the better question, <laughs> oh God! The better question is who do we want to see? Who would who would be good host for Everyday Struggle? In y'all's opinion, I'm gonna be honest with you. You have to fuck Everyday Struggle. Like get them out of here. Yeah, let them play come in. Them. Like let let that shit run its course. Mm -hmm. Let it run its course. Let that shit run its course, and let's get. Justin Hook, just, he just can't have that rude Jew nigga on his show. Like, get rude Jew the fuck out of here. He complains <laughs> about Nas, but hell's he forty. Like, I, that nigga he, had me all Jew. the way confused. Fuck rude Jew, man. You know what I'm saying? Get him the fuck out of here. He rides for the South, and I, I hate people that ride for the South, man. Like, I, I, I to the point to where they neglect other good shit. I, I've never been like that. Yeah. Just because I'm from, I'm from really. No other place in the South cares about Dallas. Like, True. who the fuck has ever said in all my Dallas niggas in Atlanta? Mm -mm. Nigga in Houston. If we had a flood, it'd be quite different. Ha <laughs> ha, Jerry Jones can't save y'all ass this time. Like, that's how, like, that's, how it, that's how it is sometimes, bro. When you deal with the, the, I mean, me personally, I got family in Houston, so I always had love for Houston. But it's not reciprocated. That's true. It's not reciprocated. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, it, it may sound mean what I said, but if shit flood up here, it, it won't. The, the reach out won't be how yeah. I reach out is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm guaranteed. Who the fuck said anything when niggas was shooting downtown in Houston? Mm. You mean Dallas? Yeah, when niggas was shooting down, when niggas was shooting downtown, and he broke his leg. What Houston nigga you know was saying? Man, my Dallas fan really going through it right now. Real talk. You didn't hear shit. You didn't hear nothing. I mean, that's kind of the way. To be real with you, it's kind of the way. It, when you when you see something, that's like right now in Illinois. Does anybody care about what's happening in McCann, Illinois? What's happening? No. Nah. You gonna go to the major? Not to say Dallas ain't major, because Dallas is major. But Houston is like when you think of Texas, it's spit back on the hip hop shit. Yeah, yeah true. So when you talking about Texas, niggas think about H Town. Yeah, that's first thing that come to their mind. Yeah, but, sure. but, and but, that's that's. But so if you they, go, if you go outside of Texas. Dallas is the number one city to everybody else. And I'm telling you what I know. Oh, if we were talking outside of, if we're talking outside no, of the if we're context, talking about commerce, we're talking about uh, the shit that really matters, commerce, architecture, yeah, yeah. Uh, technology, the shit that really matters, Dallas is number one. Sure. You know, in urban culture, that shit don't move us. Yeah. I mean, we don't yeah. care about Texas Instruments. If, if Texas Instruments <laughs> wanted to hire a nigga, right, and you know they'll pay a nigga $100 an hour, <laughs> Texas Instrument or fucking Nike, a nigga will fuck around and go to Nike yeah. just based off the strength. Like, yeah. if he said, man, we got these two companies, you can work for Universal at the ground as a regional. You know, like yeah. the shit that Pat did. You're regional for Universal, or you can work at Texas Instruments. Mm -hmm. Texas Instruments is the obvious choice, yeah. nigga. <laughs> Niggas gonna pick Universal because it sound good. Yeah. And urban culture, the shit that we validate True, and we mean, think yeah. is biggest. So I get why Houston. And let's be real. Every single city that has ever had their moment in Dallas will do the same. Because we didn't see niggas go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in Dallas with this much recognition. Yeah. So sure. anytime somewhere get a lot of recognition, 
typically niggas get a little bit of they zealots. New York did it. I mean, Everybody they had it for did. 40, for damn near forty years. Shit, and guess so, what? They watching Atlanta rain on. Oh no, nah, they no no no. Shit. no you know you know why? Because they've exhaust they've exhausted every resource that they could give hip hop. When you give it, when you give niggas it a Jay Z, when you give niggas a Nas, when you like a Ghostface, you you they've exhausted every resource they could give. Yeah. Everything has a, everything has a shelf life now. That shit sounds sweet as hell. That, no, I'm that, just ask them new niggas or New York niggas how they feel. And that brings up no. a, that brings up an interesting. They they ride the South wave. That yeah, brings, exactly. Yeah. That yeah. brings up an interesting point. Um, one thing I will, I'm kind of interested in. I actually asked this on a different episode. Do you think that if we were to fast forward? Like forty years, would hip hop be associated with the South, or would it be associated with if, East Coast? If, and if, if, because history history is nostalgic for the niggas who lived through it. But when you let the niggas who lived through it die, and you get mm-hmm. to a that end where niggas don't know, you know what I'm saying? They don't know what's what's happening. It'll come a day where if if the East Coast doesn't do their due diligence. They can be forgotten. Niggas yeah. ain't gonna be talking about. Why the South you think they all clicking shit. up now? Like they, all of them are like in and all they beats with each other and shit, trying to come together. Like it's because I mean, like, they better. And, and all of them like forty plus too. So yeah, like, plus they, they, they that's just man shit. Yeah, like, they should just. But I mean, honestly, I feel like the most forgettable time in hip hop history, when we look at, back on it, would be this time of the disposable music. All this shit is disposable. We say that shit, but then if you look at the mid two thousands, we let a lot of shit pass too. So my thing is, but is anybody listening to that shit today? Yeah, no, nah. Nah. nah, not going back and listening. That's what I'm to saying. No hey, John, when this shit is over with, nobody's gonna be going back listening to this shit. No, nah, I agree. Like, I it's agree. A better, but I'm just saying, you said you said now is the most forgettable time. I'm like, nah, we've had a lot of forgettable times, my nigga. I you mean, know. no, but but in the mid two thousand, like shit still matter to a degree. It don't matter anymore. Like it really doesn't. Niggas is grown men is really saying chuk <laughs> and that shit is considered great music. But at the same time, every single every single era has has trash, trash niggas. Hip hop. Say, do you know hip hop is always been, been held? Heavy? They've never been held to this degree. This, yeah. Say, and they still niggas, the trash niggas say. is out front like the trash niggas. But he ain't selling shit. <laughs> I was just gonna say, niggas, they ain't selling I done shit. I said this a thousand times, bro. Niggas be talking about you uh, got man, Young Thug need, ain't selling shit like, compared nigga, to Kendrick. Say. No, okay. not, not fuck compared to Kendrick. Kendrick. He not selling I saw shit compared to Cole. Bob Deep, nigga. He's moving 30,000 yeah, units. He ain't moving shit. Niggas selling th- say they just heralded. Outside of Kendrick and J. Cole, what is Big Crit selling? He ain't selling more than Lil Uzi. I know that much. He's selling more. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, he uh, uh, is. He probably will. He sold more than 30,000 first week. He probably will. I mean, in 2011... When niggas say, cared say, about Big Chris, I'm gonna be all the way honest with you. Big Chris' last album came out in 2014. Be, it sold more than 30,000 records, my nigga. Niggas say, time know. out. Niggas nah, just overemphasize silence. Let me look we, do, see. we do with hip hop what we do in life. A nigga can give you a dollar, you'll forget to pay that motherfucker back. A nigga take a dollar and don't pay you back, you be all on his ass. <laughs> we do that with negative shit. So we have this thing where we paint a picture in the 80s or in the 90s or in this era that there was hip hop was a bountiful with these incredible fucking mm-hmm. people. Noriega sorry no bitch. But he but guess what? Is, Big Chris but last album what? Big Chris last album sold fifty five thousand first week. He sold more than Kodak Black just sold. Yeah. But uh either way either way, that's neither here. But he got there. dropped from his label, but go ahead. Niggas always he got dropped too though. Didn't he get piece. dropped? Nah, yeah. nah, he left. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he left. He fulfilled, he fulfilled his contractual shit. Yeah. He left. He's he's uh, actually about to put he, out something. Nah, he actually begged no ID on his way out to help his ass out. That's <laughs> what logic, what logic, is. logic is logic is selling like crazy first week numbers. Because well, logic is a white boy, but let's go ahead. Ah. Logic, bro. Yeah, logic trash. Care, logic trash is fucking. He's a white boy, so let's let's keep it where it's at. But I'm saying he's better than. I'll take him over Lil Uzi Vert. I'm gonna be honest with you all day. I'm gonna be honest with you, like all day. He actually tried to grab them niggas steez a little bit. Like he, he, like, <laughs> yeah. Logic tried to steez <laughs> up. Logic tried to steez up. It still didn't work for me. Push but us I all. Push us all. Pretty much push us all more first week than yeah. Lil Uzi verse. Say rap has uh, rap. Come on, bro, push you you, you told you told me the names MCs besides besides MCs Kendrick and Cole. MCs always gonna outsell niggas. The only MCs who do not them niggas that sell more than Migos though. The only. Nigga, but, the Migos are the exception to the rule. They're not the rule. Though. Yeah, real shit. And let's I'm be real. Saying, Chance it, took, so it took a truly artistic Chance nigga. Rapper, it took a truly but artistic asked, nigga. Then you just asked me to name if, if, like rappers outside of Cole and Kendrick that are selling. That's what I'm Here's doing. The no, they're I not know. going platinum though. I'm but talking, they're when selling, I selling more than these niggas that you say are taking over. Is what I'm I saying. I didn't say they're taking over. I said they are in the. No, they're <laughs> no, they are the. 
picture that's being painted yeah. of what the broad that's what the this machine is the broad brush of hip hop is today. That's all I'm saying. Machines pushing that we, out front. I, I, we, we know who's selling at the end of the day. Man, do you but know the, the machines are pushing brush? it, but is it working? Is what I'm saying. I don't know because all these, little Yachty get little Yachty been quiet as hell since he sold them little it, measly but, ass first week numbers. Out. But my yeah. thing is when when Lil Yachty Easy does this, right. Tay K does this. And when Tay K does this, this other nigga we don't know does this. Then this always, other nigga but it's this. always that, been like that. That's an easy, bro. Say, if something is who easy was the weak make, nigga that came out the Afro man? No, once he got, once he got it, once once I got hot. No, once nigga, nigga let him in his ass. We never saw the uh, niggas like Cuckoo Cal man. always existed. Fans. He's better than Afro man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be real with you. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My point is, it's always easier to turn out chicken. Is- the, okay, but well, let's put it like this. <laughs> Which one is easier to manufacture, like- right? <laughs> a Gideon t-shirt or a Gucci t-shirt? <laughs> uh, one of the Gildan t-shirts. Which one is easier to manufacture? Oh, it's going to be the Gildan because the Gildan is a lower quality t-shirt. So you can pump them hoes out like this. You can pump them out like this. When it comes to couture shit, it take a bunch of motherfuckers to come together to make that shit. So it's going to be less of them niggas. It yeah. always has maybe, been. Maybe in the 90s, nigga, they put that shit on the speed press just like Man, some of my favorite something. music from the 90s when I listened to it now was fucking garbage. I love Chief Rocker, my nigga. Chief Rocker, <laughs> nigga. Is that nigga rapping, though? And yes, he ruled the airway. Boom, shaka, yeah, I lived through that. Like, niggas be pretending. That's nah. a fix. That's a fact. Was the niggas, and they ruled <laughs> the airwaves. They all rap like that back Busy then. Busy B Star Ski is a motherfucking founder of the music. He trash as fuck. No, a lot of no. <laughs> A lot of that shit is garbage. I didn't, Pure garbage. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I didn't harken back to the nineties for my point, nigga. No, it was, I, what I'm saying. It's I, always I, I, been I bottom it. heavy. Rakim is a guy. It's a re, when you say a god MC dog. Gods are so not abound, so, so nigga. You tell, so you mean to tell me that there's That's, more there's more quality niggas today. In the forefront than there was. Nope. In the there's just as many trash niggas mm. as there has always been. That's, that's, that's my that's all. I, that's I, all I disagree about, with that. You talking about quality niggas? I disagree. Are there, with that. Is there as much diversity as when there was a DMX, Jay Z, uh, Ja Rule? I'm not saying nah. Ja Rule is a legendary nigga either, but these were unique voices. Mm. Are there as many new, unique voices? No. No. Is there as much garbage as there has always been? Yes. Always been garbage. What it is nigga. is. Uh, the thing that's pushed it over the edge is the internet. Yes. These yep. young I mean, these it, young dudes know how to use the internet yeah. to push their trash. No, they I, that's, I, I they better see. marketers than talented. No, I, no, I exactly. would be no, I, I, me personally, situations. I think I think we're at a time now where and it's always hip hop has always been like this. Young niggas care about what young niggas care about. Yeah. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So when niggas thought Chief Rocker went hard, when I was one of the few niggas that was like, I didn't want to hear that shit on my uh, <laughs> NBA street. I, I wish that whole one on NBA street. I was one of the, I was in the, the few. Yeah, one of the few to proud. Nigga. I was one of the few niggas that hated that shit. Like, I was one of the few niggas that felt like, I remember, they remember this over you was overrated. Mm. I was one of the few. Uh, you I, definitely I, one of the few. I did. Yeah, I feel I like am. it was because the rhymes was weak as hell. It was the beat. It's really the beat. I mean, if we if we had to get rid of uh, weak rhymes in hip hop, nigga, you're proving my point further because a lot of niggas that we held, heralded had weak rhymes. We were talking about Q Tip the yeah. other day. We we're talking yeah. about who heard the Q Tip. <laughs> a lot of Y'all niggas. Did, I did. No, no, no. A lot, a lot of niggas. niggas, niggas, niggas. Nigga. Q Tip gave birth to a lot of the niggas what that are giving birth to niggas today. Hey, Kanye what, West what, don't what, exist what, what, without Q Tip. For real, don't exist. Well, I, Andre, I, Andre definitely don't exist without Q-Tip. Like I said, what um, me and you came with an ideology? Fake deep niggas love try. Oh, of course. Mm, man. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I mean, because it's the most accessible. Number one, it's the most easily accessible shit for now, I, I Now, I take offense to that. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't like them. That doesn't mean you can't no, like them. What, what I, it means what I mean is by the niggas masses. who swear by tribe, yeah, like, like. Oh, no, I'm, I'm quick. Real, I, I, admitted, I admitted this weekend that as I got older, I realized that as MCs, as rappers, Q-Tip and Fife ain't they really all that. Uh-uh. What they, but what they created with under the umbrella of a tribe called Quest was classic material. I, and yes. I agree. I've come to that conclusion. No, yeah. no. I, and I, I, I agree with getting that. Getting older, I understand. I understand because when you first get into rap. Fife saying Barney on the record, shit. my nigga. Like, you first get into rap, <laughs> you be wanting the most hippity hoppity. Like cannabis will blow your mind when you first. Nah. It blows your mind. When you get in the hip, when you become a hippity hoppity nigga. And I've been a hip hop <laughs> nigga. I, what I, ends up I, happening I though, am, you start man. recognizing though. This nigga couldn't make a song to save his life. So, therefore, anything that is not easy to do is a talent. It's a gift. If it's not easy to do, then it has to be a talent. If ringing his bell was hard, ringing that motherfucker is a talent. So, cannabis, he could rap his ass out, but he couldn't make songs. Mm-hmm. Hippity hoppity niggas herald him. Migos trash, though, but they know how to make songs. Yeah. Yeah. 
These are both talents. The best niggas know how to do both. I would man. argue I love Migos more than I love cannabis. And, you know, I don't like neither well, one. You are, well, you are a competent nigga. Like, so a competent nigga. A most competent nigga choose, will say that. Most niggas choose to side. Bro, hip-hop is like a religion. No, yeah, I, you it's know, like a religion. You know, I'm a hippity-hop nigga. That's where about niggas like the Jizzle and Yeah, that's some hippity-hop shit. But you know better than to bring that. If you ever bring that around some young niggas, you know better than to think <laughs> that they're crazy <laughs> for not fucking with it. Because you can bring it to me. And I'm going to tell you straight up, man. Hey. Can you cut that shit off? <laughs> Unless I'm riding in his car. It's time we've been riding listening to Wu Tang, and I'm like, man, but it's his car. Yeah. <laughs> in all my right. car, that shit ain't fun. <laughs> That's just the nature of the game. We all got, you know, like we all got that shit that we nostalgic, the hippity hoppity shit. But you gotta, the best niggas is always. That's what make Jigga so important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Jigga was able to do both. Drop gems and drop that shit that make niggas want to hear it on the radio. So you are actually getting to my my last thing on the list, and that is 444. Um, it has gotten a lot of critical acclaim. It's got a lot of had a lot of controversy around it. But one of the things that's been kind of a recurring theme as far as younger artists who listen to that album felt like he was pushing a lot of respectability politics. And I want to know what y'all feel about that sentiment when it comes to younger artists trying to take in what he put out. It wasn't even the young niggas. It's the old niggas that didn't evolve that told the young niggas how to yeah, feel. Yeah, it's future. Yeah. It's boosie. Yeah. It's yeah. it wasn't That's true. It wasn't like the Migos came out. We keep using an example, but like it wasn't like uh Lil Uzi Vert came out and said, Fuck this Jay Z out. The the real, the truly, truly young nigga, he missed the whole event. Mm. Yeah, he sure did. He missed the whole event. Yeah, he was right busy up. being young. He was, like, yeah, he's busy, he busy doing, doing, doing what he doing. doing. And Jay Z didn't make this album for them niggas. He didn't. Mm -hmm. But the niggas who haven't evolved, they took offense like a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Future took offense. Fuck the, he ain't even the he's not even the purveyor of the money phone. Yeah. It should be other niggas who were more upset than him. Mm -hmm. That nigga was upset. He was upset because Number one, Jay-Z used his ass in the goddamn yeah, line. With your son. But yeah. he was also upset, too. And see, I ain't going to lie to you. I really feel like Jay-Z might be a, 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 a petty king. He knew what he was doing when he wrote that. Yeah, yeah. but he wrote that out. But you, I mean, he, you know before that, did you ever see the future barbershop talk with Steve Stout? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He had a barbershop talk with Steve Stout. They asked him about reasonable doubt, and he wrote it off. Completely wrote it off. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't popping back then. It really, it, he was pretty essentially saying it didn't mean nothing to him. Yeah. Jay Z saw that. Mm. Jay Z saw that. You know, but Jay Z's uh, not. If, if we're going to talk about pettiness in hip hop, there was only, there's one king of pettiness in hip hop. That is Jay indeed Z. Jay Z. Oh, I was going to say Because he, he does it blatantly and he does it strategically and yeah. he does it covertly. Like I told Jay Z is the neo of rap. Mm. He's the one. Mm. He's the one that's the universe chooses people, but the but the people choose people also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jay Z is the one who the people has chosen. And so whenever you, whenever like he's the best covert lyricist of all time, for sure, he's the best. For sure, uh, he's so he's so covert that people be thinking he's service level. You know why? You that's know that's why, that's crazy. You know why they think that he's surface level? Like whenever you album called read. Really, when you look at Future, you hear his music. He can't process what Reasonable Doubt actually is. Reasonable Doubt is 444 mm -hmm. from a young nigga. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z first yeah. in the game perspective. Mm -hmm. The shit he talking about on 444 was the same thing he's been talking about throughout his career. It's just highlighted now because he's 47, and you can't get away with Chuck. You can't get away with being... <laughs> You can't get away with the J-Bos. <laughs> you, know, you can't get yeah. away with that. You're 47, nigga. So oh, it got to be, and he been trying to figure out a way to do it, but the way to do it is to just do it. Because Magna Carta was him trying to do that. Be, yeah. He was J-Bo with it. Yeah. <laughs> He's and trying. Nigga, niggas are like, we don't want to hear that. Then he was like, okay, I'm just going to give it to you then. And then well, that, that, that's because no ID came in and assisted him to lay you know, out that vision. Because he heard life is good yeah. and was like, you know what? Damn, that's how you do that. Yeah, and I'm Jay Z, so it's gonna my shit's gonna be held look that better than Nas, cause I'm Jay Z, yeah. Yeah. which is the truth. And I'm be real with you, nigga had to finish that trifecta. Jay Z always had the knowledge, always had the wisdom, but he lacked the understanding. Like at a certain point, you gotta get now. When I say understanding, I'm not saying he lacks understanding. I'm saying in hip hop terms, he lacks in order. To, it's a certain amount of bravado that hip hop lends true, itself to true. that you have to have, mm -hmm. which and you feel like you have too. to have that shit. But you have to have it in droves, though. Every man got bravado. Every man who is not super effeminate 
has bravado. And that's that's healthy. I don't think bravado is unhealthy. I'm not a millennial. I'm not one of those niggas. Uh, toxic masculinity. I'm not that nigga. <laughs> I don't live in that world. I live in a world where bravado is necessary for a man. Arrogance is necessary for a man to go out and do the audacity, have the audacity to do some shit that everybody's saying you a sucker for doing. Mm-hmm. So all of these things are healthy in doses. Jay-Z lacked the understanding that, nigga, you have enough power to do whatever. He just said it. If Kendrick has the power to do whatever, Jay-Z, Jay-Z has Jay-Z the power does. to do whatever. Mm-hmm. And for once, he did whatever. And I'm not saying he was compromising himself, but Jay-Z's a sociable dude. He definitely does shit to bend the game his way. And this time, I kind of felt like he stripped down, aside from tracks like Bam, Marcy Me, typically an entire Jay-Z album, it would be the reverse. It would be a complete more 90% bravado. 10% 10% jewels. That's that's an inaccurate percentage. More yeah. it would realistically it would be yeah. 70% bravado, yeah. 30% yeah. jewels. Yeah. This time he reversed it. He gave us 30% bravado, 70%, 70% jewels. Cuz you can't still, call a thing 50, bravado 50 when it's when it's completely true. Like the shit that he's saying on her that niggas took his bravado is still a jewel. I like, mean it's still I jewel. mean yeah, but it's better than one billionaire. There's a lot two. of there's <laughs> a lot of uh bravado that Jay-Z has dropped on previous albums. Uh like Magna Carta, he drops a lot of jewels. It's a lot of bravado on that shit that's just, you know, uh, I just landed in Europe, nigga, blah, blah, blah. You know, Chintana, Chow Bella, a lot of that. It's a lot of that still. Because he felt like he had to give us that for yeah. us to accept. He had to give us some medicine with the pill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like this time he just gave us the pill. And that's from me, I mean, my understanding of Jay-Z. More so from what, we, from what we traditionally seen of Jay-Z. Definitely. You're right. But in his covertness, mm-hmm. he's still that nigga in his covertness. Definitely. I mastered my aesthetics. I know you often heard me wax poetic by being back in the Lexus, but trust me, that was nothing. A nigga up in the hundred, mi- a nigga up in the hundred million. I have no ceiling. I just pause that right there. That's the first time that nigga ever admitted that he was being just nostalgic. He in that bars, he's saying, I, "You heard me talk a lot about this drug dealing shit, pulling up in the Lex and blah blah blah." In reality, my life is twenty times bigger, than that, <laughs> so I can kind of stop talking about it. That's what he said. He never said that. That's brand new. Nah, not to me. You, <laughs> I, Magna, I can give you a Magna Carta when he was talking about uh, give it to me. Uh, about the Instagram shit, and I, and somewhere in America, it's like I forgot the context. The context in which he said the Instagram shit was uh back when uh, uh no, I'm talking about before before it, before it came it led up to that. But on this album, it's just highlighted because it's ten tracks and it's pretty much impromptu jazz with a damn snare and a damn and bass in it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the it's it's more intimate, so he giving you more time to parse shit apart because ain't no, ain't no party records on there. Yeah. This is just straight. It's still, my straight thing is, up. Jay-Z is, you know, even in the interview, nigga, it's Jay-Z, he cannot not be bravado. I mean, nah, that's, that's the essence of who he is, but rap gives niggas, I mean, we don't like to admit this because we rap. I'm going to say the truth. Nigga, rap faking in a bitch. Rap is faking in a bitch. A lot of niggas doing now and later raps, niggas make themselves feel like gods when you feel this big. Mm. That's rap. That's hip-hop. And there ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that. But that's the essence of nobody ever wakes up and feels like a motherfucking titan every day. But when you get in the booth, you have to be a titan every day. When you get in the interview, you got to be a titan every day. This was, to me, him kind of, he's naturally a titan. Look at him, where he's at. He just didn't put no extra sauce on it. He took his shield off. He just was kind of like, He wasn't in man. battle. I agree. So with that, um, I'm going to kind of rattle off a few albums that are supposed to come out this this year, and I want y'all to kind of give your predictions about what you think are going to happen with those. Okay. Um, so Big Crit's album is supposed to come out. No title. Don't really know when it's supposed to come out, but it's supposed to come out. Here's the thing soon. with Big Crit. Here's, here's here's the thing with Big Crit, and and, I, and obviously all of us in this room are Big Crit fans, but we're all mm. disappointed in Big Crit. Yes, yeah. because. He allowed again he, on some Lupe shit. He allowed his label situation to take take control of him as a whole, as opposed to him taking control of his label situation. And it got to a point where it felt like he ran out of shit to talk about. He literally had a had a record that came out on a mixtape in 2012 called 1986, mm-hmm. and then on his most recent mixtape had a song called 86. Mm-hmm. Nigga, like really, like yeah. like uh, like it. It just got to a point where I don't even think Crit like really was into it anymore i could Carpool. be wrong huh Overworked yourself, bro. like i don't even <laughs> i could work this show bro because he's producing his shit yeah he's doing so much bro he got his hands on so many yeah Corey touched on this shit in 2000 he has no affiliation 
He just went out in the water by himself. You, you have no affiliation. Go with Ross. Look what Ross did for Meek Mill. Ross wanted him on Maybach Music. That would have been the best look for Crit. I think so. Hmm. Association. Everybody, Big Sean. Look at everybody that's blossoming now. Association. Somebody mm-hmm. take you in the room. And to be real, none of them niggas, nobody could take their credit. Dre didn't make fucking Kendrick Lamar. Big Sean was not made by Kanye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. J. Uh, Cole was not J. made Cole by Jay Z. Definitely not made, made by Jay. Right. He weighed in the water by his damn self. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I think sometimes running away from affiliation, kind of like on mm-hmm. some shit where I don't want to be stuck linked to that. Them niggas ain't trying to do you like that no way. If anything, niggas be forgetting that J. Cole is on Rock Nation still. Yep. Because he shit. built it himself. Yeah. That's why you got to respect, even if he put you to sleep while he rapping. You gotta respect him because he did. He built it himself. Ross probably would have been a good fit for Rick. It would have been for perfect. Rick. But you know why? Because he'd have told that nigga, "You're not Pimp C. <laughs> <laughs> Give us more lions and lambs, nigga. We don't want it. Nigga, we can't. We gonna hear Time Machine so many motherfucking times. Sure. Yeah. yeah shit. Nipsey Hussle should have went over there too. Yeah. yeah. And Dom Kennedy. So do you feel like? Do you feel like now that he's not gonna be with Def Jam? That since that strips his excuse of the way his music nah, is sounding, needed the excuse. do you nah, think nah. that that's gonna make this sound more like what he initially sounded nah, like? Nah, he needed the excuse because now he's gonna be exposed, which is why it's taking him so long to release. Mm. Mm. You well, know, see, not, but then too, he's working on Bun's project too. He's pro- totally producing. Man, he needs to get the fuck out of here with that shit, dog. No, like, no, that's no, no, that's what he need. he needs to sit back and curate. Like honestly, because I think if he curate somebody, pro- curate someone's project. Yeah. He can actually see where his missteps were. Okay, I can see that. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, when, hmm. I'm just like, right now, that nigga need to get focused on his shit because he ain't even, like... You know, you know something I'm, that killed them niggas, too? A lot of them sample-heavy niggas, when they get in the industry, the shit that you got to go through... To, to get, get the sample clear. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, if you notice the sound. Because that ruined his, his debut album. album. Dog. It oh ruined God. his debut yes. album. No Return of Forever was his debut album. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that shit was... Had, had his right. career started off on that leg, we'd it be saying... Nigga, if his career was his mixtapes... Man. Big Clip would be in the running, my nigga. Oh, bro. Definitely. Big would be right behind Without a King doubt. In my book. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he better than, he's better than J. Cole to me. Of course. My fault. Yep. But, um, so I guess that's our analysis on Big Crib. Yeah. Yeah. Who else is coming out of this shit? Um, Kanye West is supposed to have an album this year. I don't want to. I'm do done. I don't you know, damn. Done. You know, far be it from me to, t- to say that a nigga should just stop doing something. But, um,. At this point, I don't want to hear shit else Kanye got to say. Damn. And and this is coming from a dude who, the first time I heard College Dropout, I finally, I felt like I finally had a, I could, I was, it was okay for mm. me to listen to hip hop. Mm-hmm. Cause prior to that, I was listening to Jay Z and Nas and Biggie and all these motherfuckers, but that ain't nowhere near my life. Mm-hmm. So I felt like a spectator. I felt like I was in the stands watching hip hop. Kanye was the first person that made me think like, oh, I can get in the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's how, that's what Kanye means to my life. So for me to say, I don't want to hear shit else this motherfucker got to say. That should say something. Yeah. Because he don't even know what the fuck he wants to say at this point. He went from literally changing the musical landscape and changing how culture is, is supposed to look and sound yeah, yeah. every time yes. every time he drops an album to be to conforming to everything that's going on that's currently. That shit's crazy. What that's true. the holy fuck is that? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what Damn, that's true as fuck. I told niggas Very true. That. After my twisted dog fantasy, I don't have to hear anything it. else from Kanye. Bro. That's it, bro. Them niggas thought I was crazy. <laughs> but yeah. I, I knew he didn't. He exhausted everything. He didn't have no more. He to gave give. this all he on that. Have, he didn't have. I'm just talking about throughout his career. That was it. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for you to curate. Go make these clothes. Go do this shit you yeah. always say you want. Yeah. Push the, I, I, the culture now forward, he bro. now he needs push to take a back forward. seat. And just produce and curate. He needs to get on that shit yeah. Rizzo on. He need to, he need to start. He I, need, I, I don't do what the Rizzo because he'll do it better than the Rizzo. Nigga, well, he maybe, need to, maybe executive producer. Nigga, no, he nigga. Need to, he need to do what Rizzo do. Rizzo win. Like Rizzo well, was yeah. a Shaolin monk for real, nigga. Like, yeah. he, like Rizzo said, I had to get. Man, I was losing myself. Mm-hmm. I had to go find myself again. And yeah. honestly, dude, like. Like, I need him to I need him to get back focused on good music. Maybe there's something he could do there. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a, man, Kanye's a giant. There's a point in time I remember when he was like, you gotta remember. There's a time when he had like he did all of B by Common. Oh my god! You know that he brought Common right. back. He he like he had late registration out at that time. He was all over the place. And he was creating magic mm-hmm. everywhere he touched his hands on without him even rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like he needs to get back to that place. Like I just feel like right now rapping, he his head's not in it. Maybe I feel like he's bigger than me. 
He actually feels like very. he's bigger than the music. Yeah. Spot sure. fucking on. But see, yeah. the thing about Mike Jack, Mike Jack never, he knew he was never bigger than the off woman. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why he remained king to the day he died. Mm-hmm. But also his ego, like he wants to continuously be considered one of the best around this these. Way. That's why he's always hanging with these younger niggas because he My wants them to herald him. See, they want him to bow down to him. This is where he fucked up. He tried to pull a Conor McGregor, but he didn't even train for it. Like what he tries to do, he tries to take his social currency in hip hop and take it to fashion. Like start where Ricardo Tichy at. Yeah. No, 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 nigga. These are two totally different sports, nigga. You got to train, fam. Mm-hmm. You got to really, really work your way. At a certain point, you have to not use it. If you really want to make it in fashion, take your name away. Exactly. Become somebody else. Straight Get up. a young nigga to be the face of it and see what 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 is really moving. Because I tell niggas right now, them Yeezy Boosts, they moving because they're attached to him. Mm. That's not what true being truly creative in fashion. If is. that was somebody, if that was some no name nigga, them things would not be. Yeah, because most no. niggas, what a, if Ricardo Tichy walked into a room, if uh the fucking head nigga at Burberry walked into a room, somebody from Dolce walked into a room, you don't know them. People buy mm-hmm. them because of the clothes. Mm-hmm. In essence, that's what fashion is. Yeah. Now, urban fashion has always been. Who's Look rocking. at me, I can rap. But see, here's the thing. The that never lasts long. No, it doesn't. You're right. Because that's not what fashion is. Fashion is Ralph Lauren. He brings up Ralph Lauren all the time. Ralph Lauren had to change his name from fucking lip shits <laughs> to fucking to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He had to beg Bloomingdale's to take his ties because mm-hmm. he thought the ties were too fat. Mm-hmm. Like, that's work that you can't skip over. Because yeah. rap and fashion, niggas, it's just like ball players and rapping. These hoes not synonymous. These two totally different things, nigga. You can make analogies about it, but they're not the same. They're not yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. So I want to go to the the next one so we can, I think I just have like a few more. Um, Nas is supposed to put out something. Oh, oh man. Honestly. I'm very hype. Uh, I'm hype. Nas is my favorite rapper if I had to choose, because it's him and Jay-Z as my favorite. But mm-hmm. I don't think Nas is going to put out nothing this year. If I'm just gonna I, don't, I don't think well, about, well, I mean, he, he's on going on tour, but. I'm gonna be honest with you, Nas. Nas really don't have to drop another album right now, though. Like, life that's is the good. Thing. Like, like, my it, thing is, it, if you listen to "Life Is Good" uh, after 4:44, you like, damn, Jay Z's. Like, I wouldn't mind listening to a Nas album, but I'm saying, like, I don't have to listen to it. Mm-hmm. If the if the rumor of Ross executive producing it is true, then oh I definitely God. need to hear that shit. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I mean, if, if that uh, if that from, happens from, from, from the leftover tracks that. I heard that Swiss got and this, this, and this. Ross ain't got to be nowhere near it because my thing is where Nas is at in his music, like, that's where he's at. Even if No ID don't do it, like, Salon Remy found his pocket. Yeah. He found a new pocket with Nas. Even though Ja'Cory don't like Salon Remy. No, no, I, no Remy. I, I didn't like Salon Remy before, before uh, after, after I heard what he did on Life is Good because he only knew where to move with Nas based off what No ID did. He heard the shit. Yeah. No, I did it. Like you know what? I'm gonna get. I'm start gonna get. I'm just gonna give you true musicality and let I you be Nas Salon over. His bag when he was fucking with Amy Winehouse. So Ron. basically, when he's in the thread with Salam Remy. But if you watch somebody his, else, if you yeah. watch Salam Remy's interviews, he always says like he always waits until there's a palette and he just kind of goes off. Okay, this is where you're going. Okay, let me do this. That's when he works his best. That's what happened with the Fugees. His best. Mm-hmm. Like, when he, what he did with the Fugees, they already had what they was doing. He heard it and was like, okay, let me I do this. My, yeah, and that's, that's, that's when you, yeah, that's, that's when exactly. you get, that's when you get his best work. Exactly. I'm definitely excited. Uh, for, I, I don't know if he will or he won't. He don't have to. But the thing that I'm kind of excited about with Nas and Jay-Z is my favorite rapper, but I can always say, Jay Z won't say it because he doesn't want to retire again. That was Jay Z's last album, for mm-hmm. a fact. Mm-hmm. I know that. As a Jay Z fan, I know that. I kind of hope it is. Um, dog. It was. Nah, yeah. that's the perfect way to end the game. Jay Z is a winner. You lose, you leave on top. Yeah. Um, Very soon. Nas still out here looking fucking twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Nas still, in my Speed opinion, like got two, two more. He got two more of them things for me. He don't have to. I ain't gonna be oh, mad man, at him. Be, oh, but nah, looking at do. the way he's moving. These pictures, he look younger than Nicki Minaj. Yeah, like, give me an album, fam. Yeah. Say, I'm gonna be honest with you. Our Netflix got to Netflix just gotta go ahead and be like, we want you to write the next part of uh, <laughs> the fucking uh, I to get down. To get down, cause Nas, you better believe Nas was in that bitch heavy right now. No, 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 change that dude. Mm-hmm. Even though the get down, get down is the corniest show that I like. It's corny. It is. Like I like it, but For it's one, very corny. Because Shaolin Fantastic clearly like. <laughs> But is it not a good representative of the beginning stages of hip hop? No, All those niggas no, was corny no. in the beginning. Like, let's be real. But it ain't no gr- like in real life. 
it's so goddamn bright. It don't feel grimy at all. Like, I mean, you know, that amongst all of that, ultra four K, amongst studio. all of that <laughs> bullshit that niggas was rocking, niggas was poor though. Still. <laughs> yeah, you know, like this shit doesn't feel like a. a I know it is telling a poor story. It talks about gentrification, but it's so fucking bright. It's like Queen of the South. Like this is about to be. This is supposed to be about drugs, but it look like Young and Restless. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But what's the next album? Um. So the the I just got two more. So, um, supposedly Dr. Dre is working on Eminem's next album. Yeah, get, get that the fuck, fuck out of here. That. <laughs> <laughs> get that the fuck out of here. I'm gonna be real with you, dog. Like, <laughs> like. If if his first if Eminem's first three albums weren't so damn good, we would have got him to fuck up out of here a long time ago. Yeah. Cause yeah. his consistency is trash. I got it him is. to fuck up out of here a long time nah, ago. Nah, off the strength, off the strength of Slim Shady LP, oh, no, Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem show, he is still in the top ten greatest MCs of all time. Yes. But if if it wasn't that damn good, we would have got his ass up out of here a long time ago. Mm. I don't need to hear shit else from Eminem. I don't want to ever again. Cause when's the last? Okay, so let's say Eminem shows his third album, fourth album. Was encore, encore. Yeah. then it was relapse, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then it was recovery, then it was, was Marshall Mathers LP, LP two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you telling me that's four albums of trash oh, in a trash. row? Oh, yeah, trash. get me nah, nah. I'm, 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 I'm good. I, I don't know if I've heard a hip hop album from a top ten nigga worse than relapse. <laughs> I really I feel like the only reason why he is at he is where he is right now is because he's white. Yes, because like. Had it not been for totally. white people, yeah. had it not been for white people, keep keeping him up there. Because he's he'd he, have been going long he's time. He's the highest selling MC of all time. One of his worst singles ever. I'm not afraid. Is one of his worst <laughs> singles ever, <laughs> and it debuted at number one. Yeah. Number one. I need Billboard to explain to me how something. And skips I just can't keep living spaces, this nigga. way. <laughs> so hard. starting today. So fucking Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. god. That Get shit for the niggas that drink a shitload of Mountain Dew Cold Red. <laughs> 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 Right. No, nah, like M, <laughs> like with M, the, the the disappointing thing with M is that the skill is still there. But I've never seen a nigga that stale in my life. It's like, misplaced. Like the it, skill is still there, but it's mm-hmm. like, but don't get a, he's a flat soda. Like <laughs> that, that been open, you know, like when you see yeah, yeah. you like woo, nigga. A nigga just That's shook it for days. Good nigga, analogy. Like, and, but see, and you open it like no it don't make no. Sh- <laughs> 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 that will come oh, off fuck. neat than a bitch. I'm gonna say this because, like, I, know, I mean, I know our show's called "Don't Take It Personal," but I just gotta say, like, we sound like we go hard on a lot of these motherfuckers, man. But I am a fan of these people. Like, I love these yeah. people, and that's why I go so hard. Mm-hmm. It's because I say this all the time, and I will say this to the day I die. If it wasn't for us, these people would not have careers. Okay. We pay their bills. Yeah. We are the reason they're viable out here. We are the Deserving of the best they can give us at all times, and yeah. when they don't, it pisses me off. I mm-hmm. ain't go that Even hard. though I ain't gonna lie, you ask for to get these. Hey, you giving these, these jokes, jokes my yeah. nigga? Yeah. <laughs> Say, bro, I, I, like I grew up to you. Like if my daddy start doing questionable shit, even in the wake of my uh, in the wake of my mother's passing, you getting a little socky, daddy? What, what are you? No, <laughs> bro, like <laughs> take that off. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna you, you gonna. You're going to get some... Nigga, my daddy, when he cut off his mustache and just had the little... I call it the twat snatch. <laughs> the little triangle underneath yeah. your lip. Yeah, jokes, nigga. Yeah. It's got to be jokes, yeah. bro. Nah, if I see my daddy wearing Riley. tap out, I got to let him have it. It's yeah. just... It's just... It's just oh we go I hard. Let him have it. It's just... I just let, I'd like to let it be known that we go hard, but it's like... It comes from a uh, it comes from a certain place of not just talking a shit. A love of the culture. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, without That's where it comes shit, from. I'm not the person I am today. Yeah. And because Eminem scored on so many niggas in his goddamn life, you, you damn right, nigga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's working. Made, he's he's working with the same that. motherfuckers that he was talking shit about. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. Yeah. yeah. His he, comeback he, album had Christina Aguilera, Pink, and Rihanna on it. Straight up. Wasn't he talking shit about all those all kinds of people? Yeah, he was going you just need three. to keep my baby away from that nigga, man. Keep <laughs> Rihanna away from that. <laughs> they nigga, got two man. number one hits though. Oh man, God. Rihanna yeah. too thick for all that. And last and definitely least. Oh lord. Um. Lil Wayne. Oh shit! Uh, the biggest fall off for any top two nigga ever is ever. planning to put out the Carter Five. See, here's the thing: when he 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 fucked up, he must have been high that day because he fucked up when he told us, "Oh, I can release Carter Five whenever I want." He fucked up because now we know that you know. Don't nobody give a fuck about this shit. <laughs> you was you could have hid behind that excuse of Birdman ain't let me drop shit and you would have been straight. Yeah. Your legacy probably would have been intact. Mm-hmm. You probably wouldn't have been fucking it up more. But now we know 
that you know. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. Yeah. Say that nigga, I'm be real with you. And it could either do one or two things. It could either actually make him fuck around and be like and, and get his shit together. Or Mm-mm. yeah, or yeah, or the, one, <laughs> one thing. Give us the one. Or like you going to drop the shit and like thinking it's still like thinking that you can still get by on the shit you've been doing and mm-hmm. I'm and tell you, this I'm point, tell you something bro. about karma, bro. Oh shit, <laughs> Wayne is is right. Wayne is about to be where Eminem is at as far as a nigga who no. had such a good run and just like fell all the Check way the fuck out. out. All of these disciples that he have in rap, and none of these niggas give a fuck about him. Yeah, mm. and all of these niggas is his students. Yep, they were in the little Wayne class of rap, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they don't give a shit about their own teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whenever you lend, whenever you lend yourself to that type of style, whenever you, whenever your style never has any substance, the niggas you raise won't have substance, bro. Well, shit. And, and my thing is, you think these niggas would be ball carrying for Wayne? They don't give a shit about Wayne. Not at but all. Wayne built. Wayne is. They give Wayne more. They, they care about his protege more than they do him. Same. We still having arguments about the Carter one and Carter two, and we on number five. That tells you everything. Can like, I be real with you? Out of the, out of classic albums we heard, those are some of the least classics I ever heard in my life. They're not even classics to me. You know what I'm saying? Southern niggas swear by. I think Carter well, me, two is a classic. No, Carter two is a classic. Carter two but, is but a four classic, out of five. On the classics list, it's in, it's in that the, always it. Uh, the fourth tier. Yeah. Of that, classics, you know what? Like, that shit making the classic. It's, it's like, like when you like Blue Bell. It's a flavor that if it's the last flavor left, you'll fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't really it ain't it ain't cookies and cream. Your brother made a nice analogy a few years ago because we had this argument. Shout out to Rallo. Had this argument about hip hop like classic hip hop albums and Shout I didn't out to feel my niche name. and I, I felt like Carter Two wasn't a wasn't a um a classic album. He made a great analogy. I still don't agree, but he made a great analogy. He said, nigga, if you look at co- college basketball, like the tournament at sixty four teams, my nigga, you telling me out of sixty four hip hop albums Carter 2 ain't up there Like 64 Like if we gonna name 64 classics You telling me Carter 2 Don't even make the bottom level Of that hoe Yeah It, it makes the bottom yeah, level he's For like, sure he was, That's what he was, That was he saying He's like It at least make the bottom It's at It'll least number never be in that conversation You know when 2K drop And they show like The all star teams The Lakers versus the Bulls mm-hmm. Like it's an all star team, but it's not in that conversation. It's an yeah. all like, Timberwolves team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you tell everybody this is the best that one play they for had. the Timberwolves. But to me, Carter, Carter 2 is a four out of five. And I believe, like we said this the other day, I believe in regional classics. I believe Carter 1 is a southern classic. And I believe Carter 2 is just a great album. I do regional. I, I think, you know. I, you know what? It's almost, it's kind of apples and oranges because I, I will say in film, I'll say a cult classic. And music, I don't like. I don't like regionals. It sound like cop out, yeah. but I will say it's cult classics. It's a, uh, it's, it's niche classics for a certain culture, of niggas. Like, this day shit. Like Liquid Swords is a cult classic, but it. But at that time, cult was hip hop. Yeah. That, like that was the culture. Yeah. yeah, the cult was the culture. You yeah, know what I'm saying. But at Wayne's time, bro, you couldn't miss that. You couldn't miss Lil Wayne, bro. Yeah, like Carter Three was the shit to me. But well, it was big as fuck when say, it came out, say, though. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. That's a top five big rap album I ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. That, that I lived that through. That time frame was... Yeah. That I lived through. 2008 I, I lived, is it's like... There's only one more album I can say that I lived through that was that big, and that was Get Rich or Die Trying. I knew you were yeah. that. Because yeah. yeah. then he dropped the G-Unit album later in the same year. Yeah, like or that. DMX. Nigga, that whole came with a well, DVD, nah, nah, nigga. DMX, we were. DMX was huge. DMX was huge, but it wasn't called a three. That shit wasn't called a... Nah, say, bro... Oh, a few 1998 no. for DMX was a no, crazy was ass, yeah. But how many niggas in Big Spring, Big Spring was rolling by blaring that shit? Say every car that passed by me, I use that to same. Get rich or, die yeah. or fucking lollipop, yeah. Or a million. And I'm which, and it's the yeah. same. In you, you said Big Spring. Shout out to Big Spring. Yes, it was like that for Wayne with Carter Three and Fifty Cent for Get Rich or Die Trying. But it was like that for DMX. It's dark and hell is hot as well. Uh, mm. nah, I ain't gonna lie. Niggas, niggas that I didn't, niggas I knew that hated the East Coast. Love Rough Riders Anthem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, uh, the damn uh, what well, times the games being played. So to I'm me, I don't saying. feel like I don't feel like a hell. Of, it's dark and hell is hot fitting the same as far as bigness to me nah, because it big. the X was big. X was big, but like it was it's he these niggas big. had stands, nigga. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> will kill you. Yeah. Niggas ain't gonna yeah, kill yeah. you over talking about that DMX album. They really not. No, I tell you what it was. It was like Tupac when after Tupac died. Like how niggas was over, like how niggas just went and gathered everything Tupac did and just played it. Every, it was like that, but this was 
minus the catastrophic event, this was a nigga putting out a CD. I couldn't go nowhere without hearing that shit, bro. Yeah, nah. 2008 for Wayne, 2003 for 50 Cent is just fucking ridiculous. Those are the two biggest hip hop years I ever seen, bro. And I, I paid it. I paid close attention to this shit, like, like. That's whenever, a conver- That's a conversation in itself. Say, you know bro, what I'm saying? Whenever you Trump DSR in Dallas. <laughs> nigga, you doing something, bro. <laughs> Whenever niggas turn DSR off to play, uh, oh, hey, what yeah. you heard about me? And it's DSR, they hype. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, niggas wearing them niggas out. Yeah. yeah. I think Wayne's My. issue is that he still operates like he just put out the Carter Three. The way he, the way he dresses, the stuff that he, he does. The, What's your rap, analogy on like, Wayne? All his shit is it's like two thousand eight. It's so much to be said. The Jordan Wayne. Fusions analogy. Oh, yeah, that nigga is a he's a walking Jordan Fusion. Like <laughs> he, you know, like you could tell at a certain point, Lil Wayne. Took everything that every culture fucked with and tried to put in one nigga. Yes. I'm a blood. I'm a skateboarder. I'm a rock star. I'm a. <laughs> he's like. And it's, it's like so weird. unbelievable. It's like that nigga. He's so unbelievable. Nobody played with him. You remember Chameleon from fucking Mortal Kombat? Yeah. The blinking nigga. Yeah. Like, who wants to play with this shit? <laughs> like. We already got Shao Kahn. Like, that's that's who this nigga is to me. It's like, it's too much. It's too oh much. And then, God. like, I've always said, to be a legend, you got to be. Every nigga we talk about in the top ten, we they got personal, they got deep. Yeah. Biggie is probably the least least personal of them all. But he didn't have enough time. But mm. it, it's true. Out of all them niggas in that, in that top ten, he's he is. Person. He's by the far. least personal. By far. Cunt, I mean, uh, Wayne. I, Wayne never who went the through fuck shit. is Dwayne Carter? Wayne never had a childhood, first and foremost, nigga. I mean, he was going out. around doing grown nigga shit, bro. At, at Tell the us age how of 13, you shot yourself nigga. in the chest. <laughs> nah, I don't need That's, to hear I, that on record. It should be a whole rap song about that because I don't know how. Like, I, don't, I don't need to hear that on record. All right. Doing this. <laughs> All right, what? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga doing a nay nay with the. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what he was doing. He was doing that South going to hold it down. That nigga said, I can point the gun at himself and. <laughs> I don't get it. All yeah. right, you guys. Uh, this is where we're gonna wrap this shit up. Um, everybody, please let us know where we can follow you, what you have going on right now, and. Well, like I said uh, before, I am Jay Will. We, I am one half of the Don't Take It Personal podcast. You can find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Uh, DTIP, uh, DTI Podcast One on all social media. Um, uh. The Matters of the Heart web series is on YouTube now. We just passed 50,000 views of that thing, so check that out. We got a lot more short films and web series coming later on this year and next year. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, you can find me at jwilletc on all social media. And uh, it's King Castro, Hollywood Castro. I accidentally Ooh, yeah, he I got so many damn personas he be so forgetting. Many like, names. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Bobby Boucher. Uh, nah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Hollywood Cast, and uh, I'm the other half of the Don't Take It Personal podcast. And you can find me on Smashing in a Bunk Bed on uh, <laughs> on Instagram if y'all want to, you know, y'all want to follow some fly shit and hear me rap and uh, hear me talk shit, all that good stuff. This nigga ain't gonna drop right. a song though. Nigga, please, I accidentally called myself by my rap name. That's how you know it's real. Mm. Uh, Long Star Music. Um, man, you can find me on all my social medias under Long Star Music, L-O-N-E-S-T-A-R-R-M-U-Z-I-K. Uh, man, I got Triple Digital Project in the works. You know what I mean? Uh, man. I always got makers on shit for me. All the time, bro. All the time. Megas all. Uh, shoot, who else? I just chopped Nixon up with, man. the rib shack. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lamar Lenz. Yeah, Lamar Lenz, for sure. Uh, we actually doing a six-song EP coming up. Uh, man. Sure, I'm just out here producing, man. Uh, Megas all. <clears throat> just type me in Google. You know, I'm humble, <laughs> brother. Uh, MGA hyphen CZAR. Uh, Unprivileged to be on Taco Greasy. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Kimberly uh, was one of the few people that I didn't know that gave me, that told me my shit was dope, which I felt was dope. It was like Thank some heart to heart shit. So uh, it's always underprivileged to be face to face with people that, and he vouched for you. And this, and this nigga, is, <laughs> I've been knowing this nigga over 20 years. So That's crazy. Fuck, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's, it's very, like, I take these things serious and important. Jay Will's my brother, Longstar, my brother. You my sister now. I can officially yes, say indeed. that. I appreciate so, uh, it. It's a um, beautiful thing, but the triple digital shit is real. It's, it's very real. It's extremely real. Uh, 
it's like it's so real. I'm just bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to say, you know, I'm say I'm about to say go to Twitter bio I'm again. I'm very, I'm, I'm very uh, happy, and it was unprivileged to be here. Thank it was. Yeah. Shout thank out. You. Uh, nah, I appreciate Blue. you having us for real. Yes, oh, yes. yes thank y'all so much for having this conversation. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now I'm even glad. I got hey. it, bro. Whenever there's a queen amongst the niggas I know, I'm I feel like, no, you I feel made, right, you made nah, the right decision. I feel that. I'm going to act less to a queen uh, other than the niggas I know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right. You're right. Talk to me, my favorite yeah, too. Yeah, I already told him they was already. Shout out to Darnell, man. Yeah. Real yeah. humble brother. Like, yeah. real great, real good brother, good good nature. I already brother. told y'all on air, y'all my favorites. We go back. Donnell came up to me and was like, "Man, if it wasn't for some, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known you, make us all." I was like, "Damn, nigga, I ain't, yeah. I ain't even make us all outfit. I ain't yeah. make us all, all up today." Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Appreciate you, bro. I know Donnell yeah, the realest. The, when it real comes to showing so. love, that nigga oh, real the, shit. Like, one of the few niggas, yeah, especially true. when it comes to music and entertainment, that actually yeah. comes from a pure place. That's yeah. why I fuck yeah. with him because okay. everybody else be wanting shit. Yeah. From oh, UPS yeah. to very, this, you very genuine. Oh yeah, that nigga made it through UPS, so you know you're real nigga. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, cause I felt yeah, yeah. I some shit about some boxes when I was <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, this nigga, this nigga can lift boxes, man. Boxes. Yeah, and and for all my UPS niggas, Darnell look like he lifts E regs. That nigga, <laughs> that's funny thing you say that. That nigga the E reg. Me and him both work on E reg. I'm the E reg ass niggas, man. For real. Yeah, that's like, shout out my niggas <laughs> going through it on the box line. Yeah. All right, you can find me. At K A Y D I G S on Twitter, on Instagram, I am Whitney Scrooston, and on Snapchat, I am Okra Dash Winfrey. Y'all got the best social media days. Yeah, I swear that shit be up. killing me, bro. I'm Whitney Scrooston. Every time I'm you <laughs> notice, it's like the third time you said this around, man, I crack up every time. I'm just goofy as fuck. <laughs> um, also, please, you guys, September 23rd, please mark a calendar. We're going to have our first live show. Hey, it's going to be. Hey. It's going to be. At Spinster Records at 8 p.m. Please come out and support. We're going to have more details coming soon, but that's a Saturday. Okay, my birthday on the 19th, so I'll be. Shout okay. out to Virgos, too. Yeah, man. Just finish. I, I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm, that's, that's all. Y'all have a good night. Peace. All right, y'all.